I'm not a liar, I'm not a cheater, I'm not all these things. If you can't leave your own house, then you're a prisoner. I don't trust her. He tries to control the way I dress, and if I want to go to the bathroom, if I want to get something to eat, I have okay. to ask him. You're controlling, and you're making somebody miserable. She's been untrustworthy. That break up. You know I mean? Everybody has the right to do whatever they want. I deserve better. Well, hold on. I'm not going to let you go back there. You took a lie detector test. Yeah. You be honest, and I'll let you go back there. My boyfriend abuses me. He has punched me. He chokes me. Do you ever watch my show? Absolutely. Now, you're in my house, and in my house, if you hit a woman, you don't get to sit on my chair. I'm not going to get up. You comfortable like this? I beat that bitch up. You know what? I let her know who ran the show. It's not very often we throw a punk out of a chair. Yeah. Valerie's fed up with her boyfriend, Chris, and his controlling ways. She says that he controls everything she does, including what clothes she can wear, how much makeup she can put on. He will not even allow her to leave the house alone. And because of all this, she feels like she's living in a prison. Take a look. I'm here today because I'm tired of my boyfriend controlling me. He tries to control the way I dress. He thinks that women who wear makeup are more slutty or promiscuous, all trying to get attention from men. When I walk down the street, he makes me walk on the certain side of him, and I have to look down at the ground because he thinks I'm looking at other guys all the time. Every day I take him to school, and I sit there eight hours a day, and I sit in a lounge area for him while he's in class. He takes the keys from me, and I'm not allowed to look around. I keep my head down, and then I come home, and I sit up in the bedroom all day. And when I go to the bathroom, he comes to check on me. On a normal basis, normally I just throw my hair off because he gets mad if I try to brush my hair or straighten it. He wouldn't talk to me for hours. It makes me put on makeup. I can't even put on lip balm. Like, I love wearing heels and feeling girly and feminine, but I would never be able to wear these. Like, I would love to wear this dress out. It's cute and it's girly, but he would definitely would say this is not appropriate. He would say this would be something that hoes would wear. This is the only thing that he approves me to wear is baggy sweaters, and he wants me to make sure my butt's covered so nobody looks at it. Before I met him, I was really social. I, I like talking to people, and I like to be nice to people and just interact with people. I, and now I kind of shut myself out from the world. He doesn't let me have my own cell phone. I don't, I don't really talk to anybody anymore. I don't have no friends. I feel like I'm in a cage. Like, I shut myself out from everybody. Like, I love him more than anything in the world. Like, I would do anything for him. I don't know if I'll ever be good enough. I'll never, I don't know if I'll be what he wants. Sometimes it feels like I can't ever make him happy. There's only one question to ask. Why? Why would you do that? I really love him. I see a future with him. I just feel like if we could get past these trust issues, like we could have a great future together. I've cheated in my past relationship before. He thinks I'm still out but doing this. But not with this. him? Not with him. You've never, never cheated on him? No, I've never cheated but on him. But you told him that in previous relationships you had cheated on a guy? Yeah, I was open with him when we first got together. But... Sitting in his school for eight hours while he's at school and you're sitting in the lounge, he takes the keys from you? He so takes you the keys from me. That's why I came here today. I wanted to prove to him that I'm not a liar, I'm not a cheater, I'm not all these things, and I deserve respect. I deserve to be treated like a woman. I deserve a lot better than this. And shouldn't you get that without even coming here? I should. What do you love so much about this guy? If he doesn't trust you... Uh, and if he, he takes away all your independence, what do you love about him? Really? He, he has big dreams. He wants to do things with his but life. But those are for him. That's great. But what, you have dreams too, right? What are your dreams? My dreams are to be a successful person. I want to... And you're, you're going to get that locked away in a lounge all day long? No, I'm not. Right. So I'm asking you, what is so great about him that you would put up with this? He really does have a good heart. It doesn't seem like it, but I feel like he... But how does he show that good heart? I don't know. He don't show it to you me You just much. said, he I shows, don't know. He shows it to other people, I guess. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be hard on you. Mm -hmm. I really am not. But if you were my daughter right now, I'd be talking to you the same way that I talk to my own daughter. And you'd have to explain to me 
you know, honey, why do you love this man so much? He takes care of me. Like he, I'm staying. I live with him. I, he gives me a place to live. He takes care of me. He, but you can't dress the way you want. No. You can't put on the makeup you want. You can't go out with your friends. You can't leave the house. Why don't you explain to me what a normal day at home is? Every day I wake up, I don't even have a chance to get ready. I throw my hair back, drive him to school. I sit there for eight hours while he's in class. He makes me sit in a designated area. And what area. do you do for those eight hours? Well, I sit on the computer and he takes the keys. I don't, I don't look at anybody that walks past in the hallway and he asks me every time on his break if anybody's talked to me. If anybody look, if I looked at anybody, we leave school, we come home, and I sit up in the bedroom. And if I want to go to the bathroom, if I want to get something to eat, he asks. He, he, I have okay. to ask him. Okay. I don't know what kind of help you were expecting from me, but the help you're going to get from me is, I have your back. I'm going to stand up with you and for you. You're controlling, and you're making somebody miserable. She's been untrustworthy. Then break up. You know what I mean? Everybody has the right to do whatever they want. I deserve better. She's been untrustworthy. Then break up. You know what I mean? Everybody has the right to do whatever they want. I deserve better. I mean, you say he's a good guy. He's got a good heart. What person with a good heart says... No, you, you can't go to the bathroom. You can't get something to eat. You ask me. Because he, he's insecure. I don't know what kind of help you were expecting from me. Um, but the help you're going to get from me is I have your back. I'm going to stand up with you and for you. Um, I want you to really think when he comes out here, I want you to think about you sitting in a room, having to use the washroom, sitting in your room, being hungry, not being able to leave the house, not being able to dress the way you want. If he wants to be with you, you don't have to change. You make him change. Um, all right, well, let's meet this guy. Here's your boyfriend, Chris. I'm not going to sit here and treat me like this no more. Yeah, right, dude. You, you did nothing not but lie to me ever since... You put things on God's life and then straight line, dude. No, I didn't I'm like, I'm not going to trust you. You sit there and you play with other co-workers, though, in front of me. I ask you about it and you lie to me about it. And then you sit here and say that I make you wear it. All I do is tell you to wear an undershirt. Cover yourself. If I can look at you and tell what, co what you would, color what, your bra how, you would If take I can tell what color your bra is, then I was like, that's not Chris, cool. I put don't. on an undershirt. You sit here talking about I can't wear heels. What are you wearing right now? I don't want the whole world to be able to see my girlfriend's, what she's got, her bosoms, her butt. I was like, that's not, that's not right. So... She comes on stage, and as soon as I walk up on stage, she's almost in tears right off the bat. Um, she came here. She's talking about how uh, she can't leave the house, has to ask permission for the bathroom to eat, has to sit with you at school all day. She's just, is, she, oh. is she making all this up? She's, she's just all right, She's over-exaggerated a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm explaining. I'm about to explain myself. Okay. She doesn't have to ask me to go to the bathroom. If she, go, if she gets up and leaves, all I do is ask her, where are you going? I Why? Because like, I want to know. Why? Yeah, yeah. So, so, that's, so that's no, not, hold on, hold on. Yeah, does she sit me. with you at school all day? Yeah, she does. I don't Why? have my license. I can't drive myself, though. So she sits there, and it saves us money, though. Why does she though. sit there a, for eight budget. hours, though? It just saves us on our budget, though. I was like, I go to school for eight Why hours. Why do you take her key? Why do you take the keys? It's because one time she said that she was going to clean up the car, though. She was gone for, like, an hour. An hour cleaning the car doesn't sound excessive to me. You know, if she was gone overnight, yeah, where'd you go? But, you know, she was a And I wasn't even gone an hour. But she yeah. said she can't No, wear, I wasn't. She said she can't wear makeup. Oh, she wear makeup any time. I just asked her to keep it oh, plain. Okay. Keep it, no, no, listen, listen. All right, you have it. certain no, criteria. Keep it, no, keep it you casual. have a certain no, okay. criteria. First of all, let me explain. I go to school with nothing but guys. So when I go to school, it's nothing but guys in my thing. I go to school for eight hours. I get two 15-minute breaks and a 45-minute lunch. So I'm in school. It's not like I get to sit here and chill with my girlfriend, though. So if she's sitting here and she's dressing like she's going to a job a job interview, though, just to go sit at school, though, and do her homework, though, I'm like, yeah, that seems kind of fishy to me. I don't trust her. I was like, her past, <laughs> her past is bad. She's done nothing but lie. 
why did you know, start dating her? She, she does nothing but lie. Why did you start dating her? Why did I start dating her? At first, you no, got a shady she past. Lied to, she lied to me I first told of you all when we beginning. first got together. I told her I was not looking for a girl who was promiscuous. She tried to make it seem like her past was not as bad as it was. So though. he's the guy that's not looking for a girl that's promiscuous. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I told her that. I told her that. She basically tried to make it seem what like What were you looking for? I'm looking for a lady, you know what I'm saying? A person that's basically is trustworthy, a woman that's got her stuff together, you know what I mean? So what you're looking for a trustworthy woman? Not a girl who has three sums and all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for that. Three you know what? what? Three sums. Did you have three sums? Yeah. Two I of did them. in a past okay. relationship. Okay. So Two she had three them. sums. And she's done she's but, done nothing. And you, but, and you said you weren't looking for a girl like that. Yeah, she lied okay, to me. Okay, but now you're with her. She lied. And every day that you wake up with her. You wake up with somebody that yeah, has but, three something. Okay, I understand that people Do you, change. Does that bother you? Yeah, it does. Well, it then really go does. date somebody else. Really <laughs> it really, okay, it really does bother me, though, but after you get a year into a relationship and you get to know somebody, you could look beyond that. You know what I mean? You're so not going to sit there and judge a person. Going through every but, day obviously, with you. obviously you, but you're not trustworthy. You have I'm not been trustworthy since we've been but together. But I do everything you put for things you. On God's does she cheat on you? I don't know. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. I told her to put all of her downfalls. I did. I was 100% honest with her. She wasn't honest with me, dude. You were 100% honest. honest. I told her everything that I've ever been through, all my downfalls, and this is what she's getting. You ever cheat on anybody? No, I've never cheated on nobody. Yes, you have. Never. You told me you cheated on your ex girlfriend. I kissed a girl. I kissed the girl. I was like, okay, so you can call that cheating, though. But she's sitting here and she knows. But she had. So she, how is anybody ever going to trust you again after you kissed the girl? I don't know. Ooh, I, I was like, I didn't. I, I'm just saying, I didn't really see that was a big thing. And I was like, ah, yeah. well, maybe she thinks that her past is not a big thing. She's done. It's it. in the past. We've all done things in the past. I know, but you don't. Okay, everybody does things in the past, though. But you don't continue to do them for 20, 26 years. Is though. she still doing those things? She's quit. She was doing that all the way till she met me. So no, what? That's you know what. First of all, when you're in your 20s, that's what people do. They date people. They have a fun time. Not everybody. I was like, I've well, been you know to I've been to you're, right, you're right. You're right. Not everybody. Everybody has the right to do whatever they want. I look at the ground. I don't wear makeup. I don't okay, do my hair. How am I trying to get in touch with real guys, Chris? If you can't leave your own house, then you're a prisoner. I deserve better. Well, hold on. I'm not going to let you go back there. You took a lie detector test. You be honest and I'll let you go back there. I look at the ground. I don't wear makeup. I don't okay, do my hair. How am I trying to get in touch with real guys, Chris? How long have you been oh, dating? Oh, a year and a half. But no, like what I'm saying though is that all I really know to, you know, say know her from is her past because we had so much gap that we weren't but together. But you though. have a year and a half together now. Yes. Judge your relationship on that yeah, year and a half. she's been untrustworthy. That break up. You know what I mean? She's been untrustworthy. <laughs> she shows me nothing, but she's trying to get attention from other guys. I'm trying to get attention from other guys. I look at the ground. I don't wear makeup. I don't okay, do Val. my hair. How am I trying to get attention okay. from guys, Chris? Okay, Val. What you're doing is you're controlling and you're making somebody miserable. And that's pretty bad. All right. You came here and you took a lie detector test. As uh, soon as we read these, you, whatever you want, and I don't know what it is. You still want to be him. You want some independence. You want a chance to grow. Um, you're going to have to stand up for yourself, and I'm going to help you do that and whatever whatever you want. Um, the good thing is, like I said, this isn't a story of he's physically abusing you, but he's abusing you in other ways. He's controlling you, and if you can't leave your own house, then you're a prisoner. Um, a lot of these questions, we usually make up the questions, but he wanted to be very specific and ask you a lot of questions on this lie detector test, and we asked you, and we asked you while in a relationship with Christopher, have you ever had sexual physical contact with any of his family members? You said no. Have you ever tried to pick up men while Christopher was at school? You said no. Have you ever snuck out of the house while Christopher was sleeping to meet up with other men? Yeah, every morning I wake up, I, I hear from him. What did you do last night? Where'd you, what did you do when I was sleeping last night? Every morning I wake up. <laughs> So hold on, you guys go to bed, right? Go to bed, you wake up and he goes, what'd you do last night? Yes, exactly. Every 
single morning. Do you do that? Yes, you no. do for us. She's making that up. Yeah, she is. She's lying. Yeah, she is. Now, she's, thing, no, hold on, hold on. She's stone cold lying. Yeah, she's stone cold lying. Then why are you no, still here? But, if she's lying on you left and right, why don't you just say, you know what? Screw you, I'm out of here. I want these results. But now, why? I want these results. You know she's lying. You, yes. you, she's making that up. You know she's lying. Yeah, she is lying. But I'm then lying. Why don't you say, I break up with you, I'm out of here? I want to hear these I'm about. lying, Chris, huh? Yeah, you is. While in a relationship with Christopher, have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone else? She said no. While in a relationship with Christopher, have you had sexual physical contact with anyone else? She said no. Results came back all the same, and they came back that Valerie told the truth. When you go back home and he wakes up and you're on the you computer. You need to change, job. Chris. I need to change now. I'm not doing this no more. I can wear makeup. I can do my hair. I can dress up. When you uh, were embracing, you said, I want to be me, I want to be free. Yeah, I do. Well, you know who's the only person that can give you that? Yeah. yeah. He can't give you that. He, he can't give you that. The only thing he can do is take it away. He can't give it to you. He can take it away, which he's been very good at, but he can't give it to you. Only you can give it to you. Um... I'm, you're very happy with those, those results. You're ecstatic, right? Yeah, I'm happy. You're going to change, sorry, right? Yeah. You're no, going to change? I said, I feel bad, Dad. Are you going to change? Yeah. You're going to let her have freedom now? She had freedom. I oh, like, she had it? So I can wear makeup, I can wear, I can do my hair, and I can dress how I want now. I can wear heels. You can. She doesn't have to sit with you at school all day? No, nah, she chooses to. I'm saying it, now it, she it, can works, have the keys, it works. Though. It works. At, now you're going to give her the keys, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. You took a lie detector test. My boyfriend abuses me. Now you're in my house, and in my house, if you hit a woman, you don't get to sit on my chair. I'm not going to get up. I, I honestly don't know the results, and maybe he is Dudley do right. He's not doing anything wrong. But what if he fails? I'm out of here. I'm not doing this no more. There's no way to Let's see if we're going to play Pick a Door today. We asked Chris two simple questions. While in a relationship with Valerie, have you ever had sexual, physical contact with anyone else? And of course... Dudley, I mean Chris. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> While in a relationship with Valerie, have you ever had sexual intercourse with anyone else? And he indeed said no. And the results for Chris's lie detector test, unfortunately for you, is he did not tell the truth. <laughs> You know what? I normally, 
when this happens, I, I, I let the person chase the other person out. And, oh, baby, if they love to take the test, it's wrong. <laughs> it is, though. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, no, no. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. See, see, the great thing about my show is we're fair to everybody. We gave her the test. We, gave, we have no uh, dice in the game. You know what I mean? We have no skin in the game. We don't care who fails, who fails. We just, it's the truth is the truth. And she came here, and we hooked her up, and she passed. And we hooked you up to the same machine with the same guy, asking the same questions, and you failed. Okay. Now, listen, I don't care that you cheated. I really I never don't. never cheated on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, when somebody does that, that's a great tell that you're lying. You know what? People do that. When they do that little nervous laugh after they answer you, that's saying you're lying. Uh -huh. You know that. You, you're a smart guy. You know what I'm saying is the truth. No, yes, you do. So my thing is, I, I like, again, I don't care. I don't care that you cheat on her. I feel sorry for her because she loves you a lot, and her feelings right now are destroyed. We all, I mean, most of us, not all of us, but most of us know that feeling when we find out that somebody we love, and you know you lied because now you're about to cry. And that's sad. That's sad because you know that you had this girl that loved you to death, that would do, that did do everything, I mean, crazy do anything for you, mm -hmm. that no woman should do, but she did it for you. And and let's hope, let's hope that she ends this relationship. Yeah. I was like, I gotta chase again. Hold on, I wanna know. I did not cheat on her. Well, hold on. No, if you're just gonna go back there and tell her, I didn't cheat on you, I'm not gonna let you go back there. You be honest and I'll let you go back there. I didn't cheat on her. I want to take a lie detector test again. How many times did we? Wait. Oh, we gave it Hold to on. Me, you gave it to me twice. We That's gave it to you part. twice. Yeah. How many? Uh, yeah. Twice. I want to take it over no. though, please. You, how many times do you want to take it? I was just going to. I was like, how many times do you want to take it? I don't know. I was like, I don't know why. Four I more times? Down. No, I don't even. Six more times? One more time. No. I was like, no. You know what? She's watching backstage and she sees what's going on. I know if she wants to come talk to you, no, I'll allow that. She can come back out, but you ain't going back by her. She's coming. She's coming. Chris, I'm done with you. I'm not doing this no more. It's over, Chris! Valerie, I know. I know this hurts. I know that you love Chris very much. Listen, you're a beautiful girl, and you, you are the one with the good heart here. I hope that you, say, you stand up for yourself. You, you want freedom. You want to be you. Like I said, the only person that's going to give that to you is you. So if you want to be you and you want to be free, you have to stay strong and say, I'm not going to date not only Chris, I'm not going to date anybody that's going to try to control me. And if you ever feel weak, you give me a call and I'll talk you through it. All right? Good luck to you, Valerie. I really hope things work out for you, okay? You don't get to sit on my chair. No, I'm not going to get up. Yeah, it's not very often we throw a punk out of a chair. Yeah. Then why are you still sitting down? Because I'm not going to get up. You know what? Just First of all, that's one side of the story. And you know what? There's a whole other half there. Have you hit her? Yeah, that's well, right. Well, then I get out of my chair. Yeah. See, if I came in your house and you asked me not to sit down, I'd be a gentleman. I wouldn't sit down. Now, you're in my house. And hold on. And in my house, if you hit a woman, you don't get to sit on my chair. Now, I'm going to ask you politely for the last time, get out of my chair. Hell, yeah, that's right.
So maybe I'll do an interview like this. Huh? You want to do it like this? I'll do it like this. You want to sit in my chair? You want to sit in my chair? Okay, I'll just ask you the questions, okay? You comfortable like this? No, not at okay, all. Okay, but so. that's how you, I'm gonna, you're going to not listen to me, then I'm going to make you uncomfortable. So are you, you abusing your girlfriend? Yeah, that's right, I am. Yeah, you are. I beat that bitch up. You, you know beat that what? bitch I let up? I know who runs the show. And you know what? Hey, at the end of the day, she knows not. Okay. That's what I think. Hold on, before before you got out of my chair, mm -hmm. you said I beat that bitch up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, why are you here today? Why am I here? Yeah. Why are you here? Just because you know what? I'm ready to cut ties. I'm done with this girl. And then why are you I'm here? Just to see that you know what? Just to prove that these kids are mine. Like I've been doing for the past two years, I will take care of my kids. I'm the one who provides for them. So you think they're not yours? I, I do not think they're mine. That's right. Let me, let me ask you. Uh, you think it's all right that you get to beat up a woman? No, not at all. Then why do you do it? Why do I do it? Yeah. Because who get, what gives you the right to do it? This, this damn girl has the nerve to go running around talking all her <laughs> to her friends, you know, saying this and that. She has the nerve, and I told her, every other girl I've been with, you lay your hands on me like a dude, best believe you will get hit back like a dude. It's not like I'm the one running around. Well, why around. do you stay in then? What? Why do you stay in it? If she's for putting her kids. hands on you. For my kids. Oh, no. No. Okay. No. That's, you know what? That's stupid. All right. That's, it, you're that's right. stupid. It is. It's, it's, okay. You know what? And I don't condone women hitting men either. Thank I don't you. condone okay. it. But I don't condone that, okay, if my wife hits me, I'm going to hit her back like a man. Okay. No, well, then I'm the biggest coward alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I mean, think about this. Think. I'm going to go home tonight, and the, the, the mother of my children, right? The mother of my children. She gives me a crack for whatever reason. Is. And I'm like, okay, bitch, you want to hit like a man? You're going to get hit like a man. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, does it? And then my kids are seeing me beat up their mother. No, not at all, because it's oh, not no, like no, I'm no, no, because that never down. happens. It's never happened. No kid that's ever right. sees no mommy kid. and daddy no. fighting. That's right. Never. Yeah, you're the first case ever. Okay, well then, there you go. There you go. History on Steve Wilkos. There you go. Let's do it. History. Let's do it. That's right. Yeah, it's not very often we throw a punk out of a chair. Do you want the kids to be you? Absolutely. Yours? And do you love her? No. No, you I don't love her. No. When did you stop loving her? A long time ago. Why did you have any kids with her in the first place? First of all, I'm not going to say they were an accident, but you know what? It just happened. And if you're not the father? Then, hey, it is it is what it is, and I'm the dumbass at the end of the show. Well, okay? you're the dumbass now. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's bring out this woman who has incredibly bad taste in men, Amanda. Me. I don't provoke you. I don't touch you. You're the one disrespecting me. You're the one who okay. always want to lay their hands on somebody Excuse first. Me, no. You're the, the one, one who always who who has who has me how you like yeah. a We asked you, did you have sexual intercourse with your ex after getting back together with Joseph? She said no. So you're with this guy, right? Yes. And why? Because when I, I've known Joseph for 10 years, he's wanted to be with me before, and I just thought, why not give him a chance? And I gave him a chance, and that's when he started spitting on me, disrespecting he spit it on me. You. Um, he spit, like, on your face? No, I, at my feet, not he on my face. He spit at your feet? Do you still love him? Yes, I do. Do you still want to be with him? No, I don't want to be with him. You don't want to be with him? No. Well, that's good. I mean, you still love him because he's... Now, he denies. He's wondering if these children are his. 
He can wonder, but I know I'm a thousand percent sure those are his children. Enough is enough. Like, you're still trying to grow up. You're very immature. You're trying to grow up. And we have kids that are growing up. They don't deserve to sit there and see you beating on their mother. You know, I don't want to grow my kids up living dysfunctional. He says your kids have never seen it. No, my kids have seen it. He's trying to yoke my kids out of uh, out of my hands, you know, while he's choking me and trying to hit me and knock me over because he's sitting there cheating on me and telling so me So what that. I said, most of the time when people are hitting each other in their own home, kids usually witness that kind of stuff. Yes, they okay. sure do. So I was right. Yes. Okay. Um, your mother's here. Yeah. Let's find out how proud of you she is. Let's bring her out. Hi, Steve. How are you doing, Mom? I'm okay. Um, punches her, chokes her. Pulls her hair, threw her through a wall, throwing McDonald bags at her, calling her bitch whore and everything else. We've heard that on the stage. When you, this is your son. Uh, what do you want to say about that? Well, first of all, Joseph, um, Joseph, you also treat me, you tell me when you want to. You call me a B when you want to. I made mistakes in life, okay, and I've, and I've changed for you guys, okay? Um, Steve, I have a lot of guilt because of my past. His father passed when he was six years old. He never you had no mistakes. one. I made mistakes, you know? And you're trying and I now? Know, and I know that a lot of this is just anger issue. He's never had this. Try. For don't him. Try. You don't try nothing. You can say what you want to say. You don't do nothing. Do you have any doubts doubt. that these Those grandkids are, are your Those are sons. my babies. Those are my Those babies. Are your babies. Let's find out. I certainly don't see a happy ending to this story. What do you have, little boy, little girl? Yes, a okay. um, one-year-old boy and a three-month-old girl. Oh, so you just had a baby three months ago? Yep. I guess things haven't been so bad, huh? No. Nope. You're still sleeping with her. As concerning the son, Joseph... Concerning the son, Joseph, you are the father. I told you. I told you. What do you think about that? And, and, and you, only you know the pain that you got from your father passing away and your mother not being there for you, right? Pretty painful as a child? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And guess what? The way you're acting, you're going to flick a lot of damage on your son. Daughter's three months old? Yes, sir. And you think that maybe she went out and screwed around on you, right? Yeah, that's right. You're the father. I told you. I told you you're the father. What do you think about that? What do you think? I, you call me a hoe, you call me a bitch, you call me all these names, and I've been a loyal female to you. You think Amanda, the world is against you. Order one be Amanda's age. Would you like a man to treat her the same way? Careless. Do you Watch want out. that? Do you want that? Move. Move. It's, it's about move. respect, Just Joseph. Move. I love you. I made mistakes. All right, Amanda, you, you came here and you wanted to take a lie detector test. Um, at this point, I really don't see the, the point of it. But for your sake, he always questioned you whether you cheated on him, whatever. Uh, we asked you, did you have sexual intercourse with your ex after getting back together with Joseph? She said no, she told the truth. Did you have sexual contact with your ex after getting back together with Joseph? You said no, you told the truth. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with another man while in a relationship with Joseph? You said no, she told the truth. Have you ever had sexual contact with another man while in a relationship? And you know, sexual contact, that could be a kiss, that could be anything. She said no, and she told the truth. So, all right. So what it comes down to is all this beating, all this swearing, calling her a whore, a slut, everything else, because you thought she was cheating. She never cheated on you. She never had sexual contact with the man. That's his guilty. Uh, all this thing that you had with the with the ex and all this, not true. And and now you had a woman that was loyal to you, that did everything for you, that gave you two beautiful kids. I didn't appreciate And nothing. you beat the hell out of her. So I can what's, I, okay. I can care if less. you don't give two
As about you her. That's okay. right, about her. Then why once again, don't you little... leave her? Why? Because you know what? Once again, Steve. So you want to be unhappy? No, you want to be unhappy? No, I don't. I want to be happy with my kids without her, though. Without, oh, so without me, my, with me being with her, oh, that's the only time I can hang out with my okay, kids. So that, spend time. It be I'm a not with her. Okay. Okay. She won't give me my kids. Okay. 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 I'll say this. Show's over. But, Mom, I I got to say, you've made mistakes, and you know what? You... Like you said, you reap what you sow, yeah. and you're getting that right now. But you try to, you, you say you're trying to turn your life around, you're trying to be there now, good for you. But sometimes, truthfully, sometimes it's too late, too and you don't get back what you, you could have had. Um, for you, you should see your eyes wide open, stand on stage, how he acts. He's not even forgiving or uh, remorseful when he finds out that you didn't cheat and that the kids are his. Now, your kids are going to grow up, a little boy and a little girl, and they're going to see mom and dad punch <laughs> each other, beat each other, swearing at each other, being totally disrespectful, and your little girl someday is going to let some guy treat her like that because that's what the way my dad and mom did it, and your little boy's going to be beating the hell out of everybody because that's the way dad did it. And that's a shame. I hope nothing but the best for your kids, and I hope somebody or you someday grow up and learn what it is to be a real man so that you could be a real father to your kids. Good luck to everybody on the stage. I hope you'll take counseling, get help for whatever your problems are, and I hope you can look and get forgiveness to each other. Goodbye. My husband's very abusive. He's taken my wheelchair, my crutches, my scooter. The man here yanks her out of her wheelchair by pulling her hair. Does he have a problem with that? And he's the reason why I'm in this wheelchair now. He had drugs in the car. It was a high-speed chase. We went through a red light. I don't owe you nothing. Not only did the man cause you to lose your leg, but now he abuses you by taking your wheelchair, taking your cane. And tells me to crawl. And tells you to crawl. Crawl, crawl, bitch. Hot. But she stops me lying to me. The cook cleaned, washed. You she caused her to lose her leg. So she you just, should she be out with her. She got broke. Bro I treat you like a bitch. That's how you act. Oh, no, you're yeah. acting I'm like a man. I'm a man. Awesome. I'm going to take your wife away from you. you she don't need your help. She can get up and walk herself. Man. Do you feel like I a am. man when I you're am. abusing I your am. wife? You say you're here because. I'm taking my power back. I'm taking my power back. You got a lot of money. You need to apologize to me. In fact, why don't you crawl across the stage? Not to these yeah. I'll tell you what, why don't you hop, bitch, huh? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. My guest is Portia. And Portia, why did you call the show? I called the show because my husband's very abusive. Very, very abusive. Manipulative, controlling. Um, he's done a lot of things to me that I, I, it's just not right. It's just not right. He's taken my wheelchair, my crutches, my scooter, my cane, my walker. He's been very abusive. Um, this guy stopped me on the street and said, you know, gee, you got a pretty smile. He slapped him so hard. I started crying. He slapped this man. It was, it was crazy. And he told me, that's my wife. Don't speak to her. Don't, don't even look at her. We walk across the street. He stops traffic. He takes his time, you know, and he curses the people out walking across the street. His mouth is like a garbage can. How long have you known your husband? We've been together 10 years. You've been together We've 10 been years? We've been together 10 years, and he's the reason why I'm in this wheelchair now. And why is that? He was coming to get me, pick me up, and um, he had drugs in the car and it was a high-speed chase. I heard the sirens, and I we went through a red light. Out of the corner of my eye, I seen a car coming, but, and that's all I remember. I went into a coma. I was in a coma for eight weeks, eight weeks. I'm not, I don't remember anything. 
um, from my understanding that they, um, he didn't even stop to take me to the hospital. I, I, he didn't stop. He didn't stop until he got caught. What happened between the two of you after this happened? We're still together. He, he's by my side through all of this. But it seemed like over the years he's gotten very controlling, very manipulative, very abusive. Like, some, I owe him something. Not only did the man cause you to lose your leg, but now he abuses you by taking your wheelchair, taking your cane. And tells taking, me to crawl. And tells you to crawl. Crawl, bitch. Crawl, hop. Get here the best. You want this? Come and get it. You know, he, he takes my cell phone. He locks me in a room. He wants me to eat what he wants me to eat. He doesn't even want me to wear shoes, high heels. He's very abusive. Very, when, very when, abusive. When did the abuse start? I should have picked up on the signs several years ago, but this last two years, three years, it's gotten worse, worse, like he just don't give a thing. Is, is there a reason for it? I don't know if he feels that I owe him something, but the thing is, I think he owes me something. He owes me a lot. Does he cheat on you? Yes. Out of all of this, um... He has a he has a child, five year old child. Um, we broke up for a week or so, and this is the results. That's the result. So he cheats, lies, steals. He does it all. You say you're here because I'm taking my power back. I'm taking my power. Back. Is it my understanding that you want to stay with him? I'm, I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he can get help and if he can change, because there's some... But aren't some of these acts towards you unforgivable? Well, for me to heal, I got to forgive. For me to get through this, okay, that's I true, have to but forgive. How do you stay with somebody like that? It's hard for me to leave. It's just hard. Have you for ever me. tried to leave? I left for like a day, three days. Um, I come back home. He gave my mink coat away because I left. He gave my mink coat away because I left. Something in my heart says if, to go on, to move on. I have to forgive him. I have to forgive him. But I don't know how to move on at this moment. I'm told he embarrasses you. Ah. Uh, he don't care if it's a child or if it's a grandmother. He don't care. His mouth, he'll curse anybody out. He'll, he talks to them like they're, pe they're no good. He talks to everybody like that. Everybody. Uh, and what, what do you love about him? Well, when we first got together. That was 10 years ago. Yeah, but I still feel that there's a change. He, could, he probably could change. He, he, did, he did change. He went from a good guy to a bad guy. First of all, I don't owe you nothing. I treat you like a... Because that's how you act. That's how no, you're acting I'm like a... I'm a man. For sure. I'm a man. You need to apologize to me. In fact, why don't you crawl across the stage? Not the stage. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Why don't you hop, bitch, huh? He was charming, cunning. Maybe I just didn't pay attention to the signs. Do you think maybe because of the accident and because you lost the lake that maybe that's what changed him? Or? Like he might owe me something? That's how he feels. Or maybe he resents you. I, I don't he know. He hasn't talked to me about being resentfulness. But maybe he does because um, I do depend on him on a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Well, you should be able to depend on him. If he causes to and you're married to him, you should be able to depend on him. He thinks that I'm strong, that no matter what, no matter what, I'm still going to be strong through all of this. I'm in counseling now. Um, I'm, I'm in a support group for battered women. And it took this year, it's just like the last six months, 
I've been going, and I, I see, I know that it's not right. It's just not right that way, Jesus. I just, something there compels me. It doesn't compel me, but it just keeps me here. You must obviously blame him for the accident, right? I blame him for all of this. But I, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to hold any grudges. Or, I'm mad. I'm very angry. But I need to move. It's time in my life I need to move on. Put this behind me. Well, and, uh, uh, and I'm glad. And I'm glad you hear that. And I'm glad that you, you turn to a group for support. But how about just putting him behind you? Just move on. I, it's hard. It's, it makes me feel like that. There's nobody out there else out there for me. There's nobody out there for you. Nobody's going to want see, you. But see, you're you're at, you're at an age. You're old enough. That happens when you're 16, 17, 18. You break up and you think there's nobody else out there for you. But you know, when we're our age, you know that there's always somebody out there for you. It's just the way it makes me feel. It's taking my self-esteem. It's taking all of that away from me. You're, I listen to a strong woman. I, I hear you know a sensitive woman that doesn't want to be treated wrong anymore. I just don't know. I just don't, I've never been in a situation like this, never been abused, never, no one talked to me like this, and it's just, I don't know how to get out of it. If I bring the police in and he says he's going to sabotage me so I can get arrested also. Does he feel bad at all? He doesn't show it. He doesn't feel it. Has he ever apologized for the he's accident? He's never apologized for it. He's never said, I'm sorry I fled the police and you were in a coma never, ever, and you lost ever. your leg. Ever he never apologized. Never apologized. And then he went and he slept with somebody else and a five-year-old not, kid. Yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. And yeah. Well, what did he say about it? That, it things happen. Things That's happen. It. Things happen. You know, um, I left, and I guess because we broke up for a week, or it was like, it was my fault, and this is what you get for leaving me. You know, I was like, okay. And, and... You're sure? I, I want a definite answer from you. Do you want to stay with him? If he gets help, if he if he can get some help, yeah. And what help for the cheating, the abuse, the lack of apology, the lack of remorse for what he's did for you? Exactly what help and what? In treating you cruelly? To see his speaking way. Speaking to you the way he does? If he can get some help and he can... Amend his ways, yeah. All right. Let's bring out your husband, John John. You know, you got the colossal nerve. First of all, I don't owe you nothing. Everything that you got yourself into, you knew it before you met me. You burned this amongst yourself. You knew about the accident. You knew my lifestyle. You knew everything about me. You rely on me too much. You want me to cook, clean, wash, bathe you. Like, you can't do nothing for yourself. You can do everything you want for yourself. Everything you want. You got a crutcher, you got a cane, you got a walker, you got everything. What you need me for? The way I treat you like a bitch because that's how you act. Everything that you get, that's how you act. You, you want me to pull your hair? Because you make me pull your hair. You want to be treated like a bitch? I treat you like a bitch. You want me to lock you in the closet? Because you deserve to be locked in the closet. Everything you do, first of all, what? What? No, this is your wife. I don't care. Listen, that's how she acts. The way she acts, that's how I'm going to treat her. I'm not going to call your wife that. I'm that she acts like that. I don't that's care. That's how she acts. Do you understand? That's how she acts. She is your wife. And I love her. You know what? She's you not going nowhere, and I'm not going nowhere. You, you sure She's love not by going dressing nowhere. her as a bitch? Yeah, because that, that's how she acts. Like a little girl, you know so what? I treat her like a what little girl. What do you girl. think you're acting like right I, now? I'm in. I'm in. That's how no, I am. No, you're acting I'm like a, man. a bitch yourself. I'm a man. So that's how men act. Men act like this. You know what I mean? If you was in her way, it'd be the you same thing. If you was in her way, it'd be the same thing. The same thing. If you was her, it'd be the same stage. thing. Take her off stage. Same thing. If you was her, it'd be the same thing. She don't need your help. She can get up and walk herself. All she got to do is grab the back of it and get her walk on. Uh -huh. Come on. She don't need nobody's help. Here's the man. The man here. Yanks her out of her wheelchair by pulling her hair. Is there a problem with that? I'll tell you what, why don't you hop, bitch, huh? Why don't nice. you hop? Nice.
I don't feel sympathy, remorse for nothing I do. How I do it, what's getting done? So, what's the problem? <laughs> you tell me. You gonna tell me how to treat my wife? I sleep with her, you don't sleep with her. So until you're in my shoes, then you can tell me oh, how to treat her. I love that saying, until you're in my until, shoes. And, and, and you can't fit my shoes, because yours look a little too big and mine's a 10. You can't fit my shoes. You can't be in my, you can't be in my predicament. So it's nothing you can do about this situation. You know what? You know what I always like to say. What? What would you like to say? I don't. I, I don't want to walk in a dirtbag shoes. I'm not a dirt. Bag. Dirt bag. I'm never a dirt bag. Never a dirt bag. I'm real. I'm real with my eyes. I'm blunt. I'm very outspoken, and 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 that's life. You know what I mean? I'm very outspoken. I'm very blunt, and and I'll never be a scumbag. And I treat people the way they want to be treated. You want to be treated like a scumbag? I treat you like a scumbag. What if everybody just went around treating you like that? I, I, heard you I, I just... don't see it happening. Oh, I don't really? see it happening. I don't so see I hear you just you go up to a guy, compliment your wife, you just give him a slap to the face? Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be? You know, She's a reflection of me. I think simple. your wife's really good looking. She is. She's a beautiful woman. Why don't she's you? She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. I, I met her with both of her legs, and she still got both of her legs. Well, she uses that why she, you don't she, slap me in the face. She, she uses that out of crutch. I, I, if, if you put your hands on me, you know what I mean? I defend my soul. I'm saying, your wife's, I said your wife's beautiful. How come you're not she, slapping me? Because it's really not that serious right now. Well, you slap somebody else. I'm in Boston. I know the, I know the consequences. You know what you can get away with, right? Yeah, that's Perry, right. you don't know what you yeah, might get away I, with, right? You're definitely right. Yeah. You're definitely right. I'm, 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 in, I'm, in, I'm in your town. I'm in your town. You're definitely right about that. I'm in your town. If you was in my town and complimented her, you'd probably be... Why don't you shut your mouth long enough? Okay. Now, right? well, you're not telling me nothing I want to hear. They're the man, the man here. All Last the three years, he abuses his handicapped wife, steals her wheelchair, crutches scooter, and says, crawl, bitch, crawl. Tells her to hop. All the time. Tells her to hop. Locks her in her room. Tells her when to eat and sleep. Yanks her out of her wheelchair by pulling her hair. Is there a problem with that? Got them evicted. Steals her phone. My phone. Lives off her disability check. Cheats on her consistently. Fathered a child by another woman while being married to her. That's the consequence of pissing me off. Yeah. She burned that on herself. Ripped up her Everything clothing. Everything I do to her, she makes me do it. Ripped up her fur coat when she tried to kick him out. I bought it. It was and, mine. And, and embarrasses her in public. She embarrasses herself. But the, you know what? What is your problem? You, you flee from the police. You put your wife in a coma. She, she loses in a her. Coma. She loses her leg. And this is how you treat the woman that you supposedly love. She puts herself in a coma. She, knew she, every, she knew everything she I was about before you. I did it. She stays by you. She's, and she's as not bad as you are, as despicable as a human being you are. She still wonders, like she's she wants you to change. She's not. I'm, I'll change when she changes. When she goes back to the old portion, then I'll change. When she starts relying on me to cook, clean, wash. That she you can caused do. her to lose her leg. So she you just, should she be helping her. her. She got both of her legs. She got both of her legs. That's a crux. She got both of her legs. She got both of her legs. Right here, she How does it feel to alter somebody's life forever? My, my life was out to lose. For, for, my life was out to lose. You don't put your wife, you don't think about her safe. You act like a she, dangerous. Listen, a going on. She knew what was going on. That's how she met me. She knew everything that was going on. She knew it. So it, it was coming. She knew Did it. Did you ever apologize to her? For what? What for am I going to lose her leg? No, hell no. I'm not going to feel something and apologize for what happened. I could have lost my life too. Because of what you're doing, not because of what she did, because what you chose that's to do. That's how she met me. That's how she met me. That's how she met me. She met me like that, because she don't got no choice but to do me. That's how she met me. She met me in a lifestyle, and that's how she's going to stay. She met you in, in a lifestyle. lifestyle. That's my lifestyle. You know, it, it's, it's truly amazing. What's amazing about it? It's amazing that this woman stays with you for two seconds. Because you come a, out here. She's accustomed to it. She's accustomed to it. You know what? She likes that. You know what? She's accustomed to you that know what lifestyle. The problem is? There's, she's there's, accustomed there's, to that lifestyle. Where are you from again? I'm from Austin, Mass. You know what? Born and raised. You know what the problem is? What's the problem? Some guys over there need to be kicking your ass every day. Not, never. No. Never. It'll never happen. It'll never happen in a million years.
nobody kicking my butt. Or whooping, I don't see nobody whooping my butt. Nobody. Nobody. I don't believe that. I don't see nobody. Nobody. You know, I'm kind of wondering if you really like this because I keep seeing you smiling like you think it's a joke. I'm a monster, that's why. You're a monster. I'm a monster. Do you feel like I a am. man when I you're am. abusing I your am. wife? I'm going to take your wife away from you. You need to apologize to me. In fact, why don't you crawl across the stage? Not to these kids. How do you feel you're not responsible for this accident, huh? Because I'm not, because that she met me in the game, and that's and, and she knew. Oh, it was so coming. she said, "Yes, yeah, flee from the police right now. Get into an accident, so I lose my leg." That, she feels responsible. Listen, it is what it is. It's reality. It comes with the territory. She uses her leg as a crutch, and she has both of her legs. She didn't wear it today because she wanted somebody to feel sympathy for her. She doesn't she, have two she, real she, legs, her own leg. All she got to do is the remote control that she has in her pocket for her other leg is put it on third gear, and she can walk on third gear, just like a car, and do for herself. And she's relying on me to do for her. She can do everything for herself. Like she wants me to go on cabinets and get her canned goods. She got a little remote control thing that she presses that can get her her own canned Why goods. Why don't you get the damn can for her if she because wants to? Because she can do it herself. She don't need to rely on me for everything. She can rely on her own self. What if do I, you listen, do? Listen, first of all, what do when, you when do? I went to jail, what do you do? I, I, I do what everything. do you listen, do? I went to jail for four months. I changed my bedroom to my living room, my living room to my bedroom. I came back out of jail, and my big ass dress and everything was back by herself. She didn't need me to do that then, so she she, she don't need me to do what she don't need me to do it for her now. Plain and simple. If she can bring my bedroom back to my living room and my living room back for a bedroom, why does she need me to get a, a measly ass can that only weighs five pounds when she's moving 20 pounds in and 50 pound dresses? Are you on drugs right now? Nah, never. Nah. Ask her, she did it. Ask her what she did. By herself. Without you're her my damn help. husband. If you don't yeah. want to help, why do you stay with her? Why do I stay with yeah, her? Yeah, why do you stay with her if because, you're going to act like this? Because I want her to get back to her old self and let her know that she don't how need she, me. How, how can somebody get back to their old self? Because she's a strong it? woman. Well, you won't even she's apologize. A woman. Maybe I'm if not you apologize, show a little remorse. Apologize. Maybe I'm she could go apologize. back to being whatever no. old woman she was. That's why, she's, that's why she's doing what she's doing now. It's a start. She's going back to therapy. She's going back to It's a start. You know what I mean? I, I encourage her. That's enough right there. You encourage her? Yes, I do. That's why she's going back so to the encouraging calling her a bitch on my stage? And that's that's how she acts. That's how she acts. If that's how she acts, why do you want to be with a woman like that? Because that's my wife and I'm not going nowhere. That's why I married her. Through thick and thin, when all odds are against us, I'm still going to be right there. Nobody's not going to make me change. And I'm not going to change for nobody else. Uh, I'm I'm changing not, I'm, I, you know I what? I change when I'm ready to change. I don't want to change okay, you. So you go back to being the dirtbag you want to be. I'm not I a dirtbag. Dirt dirt. I'm not a dirtbag. That's the whole purpose. I'm not a dirtbag. I'm not a dirtbag. That's the whole purpose. There's a reason for everything I do. There's a reason for everything yes, you it do. There's a reason for everything so I do. So why'd you sleep with another woman? What was that reason? Because I, I was in a club. I had a little good time. She, I was interested in her. She was interested in me. We went telling things happened. And so she had my can baby. your wife sleep around with anybody she wants to sleep Hells around with? No. Hells no. She wouldn't either. She wouldn't even feel comfortable with herself. Why is that? Because she married me. You tell her no one would want her? Yeah, I told her that, of course. Nobody is going to want her because she belongs to me. If she leaves you, I got, I got, better... I got, I got paperwork on her. She belongs to me. Uh, what, what I want to know is, if she left you, who the would want you? <laughs> Every, everybody I cheated on her with. How's that? <laughs> everybody I cheated on her with. Does it make you feel like a man to a... Abuse a handicapped woman? Does that she's make not you feel like a man? She's not handicapped. Yeah, she, she's you made her lose looking. a leg. You're she's the a, cause of it. You're the reason you handicapped. It. It's, it's you handicapped a, a human being. It's not You handicapped a human being. And do you feel like a man when you're abusing her, when you're pulling her up by the hair? I am a man. Do you feel like a man when I you're am. abusing I your am. wife? I am. Yes, I am. Do you feel when you're dragging her out of that chair? Yes. When you make her crawl? Yep. You make a woman who lost the leg because your stupid actions? Not our stupid actions. Our. Ours. Ours. Does your wife ever get in your face like this? No, she, no, no. but I am. So but, what are you going to do about but, it? You're not scaring me. What are you going to do I'm about it? I'm laughing at you. You're, I'm laughing. Yeah. You're amazing me right now. I'm amazing. You're amazing me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not moving. What do you want me to move or be scared? 
Yeah, I'm not. You, you don't intimidate yeah. me, Steve. I keep walking you know, up on you. And you keep moving I, back. Because you're not intimidating me. You don't intimidate me. No, Nobody you know intimidates me. You know what it is? Nobody intimidates me. You're a coward. Never. You're a coward. Never. Yeah. Never. It's consequences for what I do. So I wouldn't, so I, so I wouldn't let you lead me up to them consequences. consequences. But I'm never, I'm never a coward. Yeah, never you're a coward. coward. I'm never a coward. You're the definition of coward. Okay, then that's what you say. That's what you say. I'm in your town, so you can say that. If so you was in my town, you wouldn't call me a coward. You wouldn't. I'll fly there tomorrow. Okay. Then I'll fly there me, Listen, then guess what? In fact, look, look, in fact, all you, you gotta do is meet me at 32. You know, you know what? what? I will come see you. Okay. And what are you gonna do about what? that when I call you? I want my power back. He's a dirt bag. You got a lot of nerve. I like to be there when she, she, you take her wheelchair, make her crawl. My been there, my they're not, they didn't do nothing. So well, what makes you they're, 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 do something? They're, they're dirt bags too. They're, they're, they're not, not doing they're, anything. Not, they're not dirt bags. They're just not, they just know how to mind their business. I'll tell you what, why don't you hop, bitch, huh? Why don't <laughs> no. you hop? No. Why don't you hop around? Yeah. That's not, that looks good. Take it away. Hop to the chair. Yeah. Hop to the chair. Because I could stand up for myself. So what? I can't too. No. Yeah, oh, but your that, that, but your wife, your <laughs> wife can't look, stand up for herself. You made that seem like oh, I do that all the time. No. I do the same with your wife. All the time. With your wife. Yeah. With I your do the same wife. All the time. I throw chairs. Look at the closet in here. She probably belong in the closet right now. But that she just put on on, on your show. Come on. What are you throwing the chair? What's that? You can abuse a disabled woman, but anybody, any man, any anybody, man, you ain't abusing anybody, me. Any, Cause I'm on your show in your town. If it was my show, my town, it'd be my way. Huh? It'd be my way. Oh man, it's, it's reality. It's reality. It's reality. It is what it is. You know what? The only way I can hurt you today is what? The only way I can hurt you, you can't. today. Yeah, it's oh, impossible. I can. No, I'm going to. It's impossible. I'm going to take your wife away from you. You can't. 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 You obviously been watching this whole day. Yeah, he is. He's a despicable. He's he's one of the most despicable human beings I've ever met. Bad guy. Yeah. I'm here to take my power back. I want my power back. He's a dirt bag. I want my power back. I want to leave your ass. I want to leave your ass. I know you said that you wanted my help to, to help I need him change. Help. There's no. You know what? The only help that you need is to, to get, get away, away from, from that him. guy. Right. There's no change You're in him. Right. That guy's been a dirtbag for 10 years, and you put up with it 10 years too long. Now, the only thing I want is I want you to go out there, and if, it's, if you want, go out there and demand an apology for this. He's never apologized to you. He's never and I'll apologized. help you. I'll help you get away from Let's him. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's do this. No, I got it. You got a lot of nerve. 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 But guess, but guess what? I will never say sorry. I would never say sorry. You brought this on yourself. You brought this on yourself. How could I, Paula? Dude. Apologize for Look what? Look at you. Apologize How dare you? I need an you, apology. You knew everything that was coming to you. I don't care about you that. Every, you, I, I need an apology be out about this. It'll about never happen. This. It'll never happen. What do you it'll mean never, it'll never happen? I'll never apologize. Well, I need to leave you. Yeah, I need you, to leave but you. But you can't. I need you to leave can't you. and you won't. You can and you won't. You can and you won't. I so get back to you, sir. Washing you yourself, know what? You know cleaning you yourself. Know what? Let me tell you get something. Away from yeah, me. I put. I'm holding you. Yeah. I'm mind. telling you. You don't walk. Up. You know what? I don't care if she's your wife or not. You're not going to go up and intimidate her in front of me. Do you understand? I, I, you're not going to hear this. I'm talking to her. I'm not saying my wife. I don't care. I'm not going to apologize. Listen. 
I'm not going to apologize. You know what? Yeah. what? You don't like to smirk off your face and shut up long enough to listen to her. You can walk back to Boston. Do you understand me? I'll never. I'll always go. I'll never walk okay. back. Well, you ain't going to go I'll, back on my dime. I'm not, I'll tell I'll you that right now. Back, but I'm not going to apologize. You ain't going to go back. Well, but I'm not apologizing. Then you stand there and shut up, right. or you can get off my stage right now. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I'm not saying anything. Okay. I'm gonna let her talk. Okay. So shut your mouth long enough. Okay. You need to apologize. You need to apologize to me. It'll never happen. Why? Because you Why? don't deserve apology. What do you mean you I don't You put deserve yourself it? in that predicament. Because you ran, you were running from the police, the car hit me, I went into a coma, that's my fault? How dare you? You know what? I did marry you. All for all the wrong reasons. It's not gonna get. I happen. need. I need my power. Yeah, I do. I need my power back. You see that? You see that on your finger? I don't want to hear it. How about for five seconds, drop the clown act? Really? How about for five seconds, man to man? I'm looking at you, saying, "How about finding something inside you? Really? Think about your mother. Think about somebody you really care about in your life." Maybe your children. Think about someday what, what the horrible things that could happen to them that would tear you up inside. And look at your wife and say, can't you give her something that she needs? She loves you. This is the woman that you love, that you say you spent the last 10 years of your life. You can't look her and say, I'm sorry for what happened to you. You no. can't give her that as a human being? No. You as know, a man? You know what I can give her as a human being and a man? The courage to keep doing what she's doing. Go back to You know what? To Shut up. Therapy. Shut up and get okay. off my stage. Get, you go back. get off. Go. Get going. You need to apologize to me. In fact, why don't you crawl across the stage? Not to me, stage. Why not drop the clown act for five seconds and apologize to her? I'm not apologizing. She knew my lifestyle. So she knew everything about That woman has suffered, and all she wants is I'm simple apology. I'm suffering it, too. You know what? I'm Put, suffering be a too. man and rise above it and give her what she needs. I'm not apologizing, Steve. You're not going to make me apologize. I'm not trying to make you. I'm trying to make you do it for your wife, not for me. I don't I'm, give a damn and, about and guess you. guess what? Steve, you, you don't go, go through what I go through at home. You know what? You don't go through what I go she through. She lost her leg. Okay. You think about it, if you lost your and leg. And I lost, guess what? 11 years of my life in the penitentiary and prison. But because of her? Huh? Because of her? No, not because no, of her. No, not because of her. You lost 11 years of your life because of these foolish decisions you're making in your life. I'm not apologizing, Steve. You know what? I'm not apologizing. I think, you know what? I do think you're a dirtbag and a despicable human being. I'm but not you can't tell me there's not something good in you, some kind of feeling. I love her. I, I, you, well, I, then I, if I, you love her, then you can give her, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give her some. I'm going to give her an encouragement that she needs. Please. Take some responsibility, damn it. I'm not going to do it for your wife. If you really love your wife, you can give her that. Give her an ounce of dignity, man. I love her to death. Well, that's, then, that's if you my love world. her, that's my all. If you love that's her, that's my world. If you love her, that's my world. That's my all. If you love her to death, you can say, "I'm sorry." That's all she wants. Look, look at your wife. That's all she wants. I'm sorry. Come on, see, let's go. You go. Go tell your wife you're sorry. Uh, let's go. Let me have. You're on the baby. You're on the baby. I don't know. I didn't hear you apologize. I told her she's going to be all right, and I'm sorry. We're gonna get through this. Just act with a little compassion. A little compassion. Put yourself in your wife's position. Even if she had two good legs, even if she wasn't disabled, if she wants a can, 
If it's a woman you love, you get her the can. I love it to death. I just wanted to be independent again, Steve. That's all. You know what? I just wanted to go back to the old Porsche. You know what? I'll give her the world. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I'll give well, her the world. maybe if you start treating her with a little dignity, a little respect, don't be physically abusive to her, maybe she can go back to being that person. You know what it is sometimes, Steve? It's like what gets me going is when she questions me as a man, where I've been, who I'm with, why I'm with them. That's what gets me sometimes. It wouldn't lead up to me you know, the way I treat her. I'm a man. If you, if you, if you marry me, trust me. Why would you marry me if you didn't trust me? Well, when that you're married, leads up, when you, that leads when, up to things. When you're married, you don't act like a fool either. You don't, you don't go to clubs where you can get drunk and pick up women. Yeah. You know, honestly, I could sit here and talk to you and, and, and feel like I made some progress or I helped. But truthfully, it's not going to happen. Ten years. I can't ever make another man understand that when you have the woman you love in your car, you don't flee the police and put them at danger. You don't put your kids at danger. If you have somebody that you love and you're with, how about protecting them? How about watching out for their safety at all times? What about mine? What about my safety? What about my safety? You know what? You, you keep saying you're the man. I'm the man. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I don't think when I'm with my... What about my safety? I don't think about it. My children need them as their father to take care of them. My wife needs me as a husband to take care of her, to protect her. You know who takes care of my safety? Me. I, me too. Okay, there I you go. Care so my then, too. don't whine like a little uh, child. What about my safety? No, you're, you know, you're the toughest guy in Boston. Nobody's ever kicked your ass. Don't, don't take it out of context. You know? Don't take it out of context, man. You know what? I don't know. It was nice that you came out and said he's sorry and, you know, we're going to work through this. But the truth of it is, what man that loves anybody would call somebody that name? You know. That's what happens sometimes. It is what it is. I don't bite my tongue. I say what's, what's, what's need to be said. Well, if you really mean what you're saying and you really want to change, do you want to change? Or you just want to keep being the way I'm you are? I'm going to change when, my, when, when Portia goes back to the old Portia. So she's, she's going to counseling and therapy. She's trying to make an effort, right? No. Yep. You said that. I don't mean I need counseling and therapy. <laughs> no, I don't think you do either. I sure I don't. Think it's I gonna, sure don't. But what I do is I'd, I'd like to see you get on your knees before her and tell her, why don't you tell... I'd like you to get on your knees before your wife and tell her, say, you know what? Don't ever allow me to treat you that way again. On your knees. On your knees. In fact, why don't you crawl across the stage on your knees, too? Never. So... You won't do for your wife what you made her do for you. I'm not crawling across no stage. I'm considering about getting on my knees and, and letting her know that things is, things is going to get better. But I'm not crawling. I can't, and I can't do it. Get off, you're, you're done. Get off my stage. Right here on my knee. No, I don't know. You ain't gonna make an effort that I don't. Because I'm not crawling. That's right. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you touch, see, do anything for your wife unless you do what I want you to do. I'll take her out for a nice dinner. I'll treat her real nice tonight. Why, why won't it happen? Because she wouldn't go to dinner with you. Would you like to go to dinner with me, Portia? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you yeah. go.
do, you, do, you, do you want him to crawl? Let you know how it feels. To let you know how it feels. What you made me do to get what I needed, you need to do. And what satisfaction are you going to get out of that? I needed to get my wheelchair. I needed to get something to get to do what I needed to do. But that's still not the question. What satisfaction are you going to get by me crawling to you, saying sorry? It's the beginning. Yeah. It's the beginning. <laughs> it's a beginning. It's, it's a the beginning. beginning. It's the beginning. Maybe if you felt crawl or leave. How's that? Oh, yeah. What? Say that again. Crawl or leave. Crawl or leave. I'm doing this for one reason, because I love you, and I'm and we're going to get through this, and I'm sorry for being a scumbag and a piece of That's what I'm going to do, okay? Because I love you. something to that could you get some therapy um i'm gonna be honest i'm a little pessimistic that's just my nature sometimes and uh this is i'm gonna give you me. all the help that i can i promise you that but this is the other promise if you call me and say that he's still abusing you i will personally get on an airplane or because I'm moving real close to you, I will get my car and I will drive up and I will show up at your door with the police and have you locked up. Thank you. I hope that you start becoming a loving, compassionate husband. I would hope for your wife that you can accomplish that. I certainly don't think you want me showing up at your doorstep with the police. And there's no need for that. So why don't you no, take your wife... I don't like authority. Why don't you take your wife, we'll give you counseling and everything else that we can help. We'll, we're going to do that for you. Thank you. Snow, why don't you be a good husband and escort your wife off the stage? My daughter, somebody touched her. She's accusing you of it. I didn't do it! I'm being accused of sexually molesting my niece. My daughter said my auntie Brandy does it. I have to believe my daughter. She doesn't lie about things. I've been called a monster. I've been called a really bad person. I didn't do anything. These are the hardest shows to do. And these type of allegations between family members tear families apart. I can't move forward or past this until I know the truth. The results for Brandy's lie detector test is that she... I have an unbelievable update on a 23-year-old heroin addict named Jessica. I had this crazy dope habit. I was getting money in the streets by selling myself. Your arms are yeah. pretty scarred up. I had a seizure before because of, I did too much coke. And like when I woke up from that, it wasn't like I'd seen a white light. I was just dead to the world. Like The world was shut off to me. And I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. I think I want to live. It has been 34 days since Jessica left for rehab. And she is back today. Three weeks ago, Cassandra was shocked to hear that her sister Brandy was being accused of molesting her four-year-old daughter. But Brandy was devastated. She says she would never inappropriately touch her niece. Both Cassandra and the child's father, Anthony, 
believe their daughter and will not let Brandy see her until they know the truth. Take a look. I want things to go back to the way they were. I'm here because I'm being accused of sexually molesting my niece. When I had got the call from the detectives, and when they told me it was about my niece, I thought something bad had happened because nobody was telling me what was going on. And then when I got there, they started interrogating me and questioning me. My niece had told her school teacher that I was tickling her in her private parts. And they, I've never tried to intentionally touch her. I just, me and her always have like tickle fights and stuff like that. Um, we've always had a tickle spot on the inner part of our thighs. So I would always tickle her there. I never tried to do anything. I just always thought it was like playing around and just tickling and stuff like that. My family won't talk to me or tell me what's going on, nothing. The only time that I've talked to my sister was a couple of days ago. She had called me and said that she was hurt and that she was sick because of all this. And I told her that I'm willing to do anything to prove that I didn't do anything. I love my niece with all my heart. I like, I grew up with her. She's like my, she's like my little baby too. So I'm here to take a lie detector test to make sure everything goes back to normal. I don't want anything more than just to prove that I'm innocent and have everything back to the way it was. You're under the impression that she molested your daughter. Yeah. Do you believe that she did that? I think that anything's possible. Well, that's, that's true. Um, but in your, your heart, your gut. I can't put anything past anyone. I mean, I have to believe my daughter, you know. How did, did you find out, um, that your daughter may have been molested by your sister? Well, three weeks ago, uh, we had gotten a phone call from her school and her father went down and, you know, they explained to us that she was sitting with her teacher, playing with the teacher, tickling her. And she asked the teacher if she was ticklish. The teacher said that she wasn't. My daughter turned around and said that I'm ticklish everywhere, even in my privates. Now, the teacher had to ask my daughter who or how she knew she was ticklish in her privates. And my daughter said, my Auntie Brandy does it. My Auntie Brandy has tickled me in my privates. So the teacher had to call DCF, which is, you know, the Department of Children and Family Services, and the DA and detective and everything. We've met with them. We've had, you know, this situation reoccurring. My daughter has continued to say the same story to every person she's said it to, which is what makes it believable. A four-year-old child cannot continue to keep the same story. It isn't possible. Um, and, you know, since then, I've been physically sick, and I can't move past it. You then called the police? We had the school called the police. And we've met with them, we've, you know, sat with them and discussed everything. And my daughter's met with the DCF worker, she's met with the ADA. What did they say about the investigation? They can't prove it either way because there's no physical evidence. We weren't able to take my daughter to a doctor to find it out because they said that it'd be more traumatic for someone her age than... Besides saying that she was uh, ticklish in her private parts, did she exhibit any type of sexual abuse? She has been. Um, our, the school has been calling us multiple times with her showing signs of, uh, you know, trauma or abuse since this accusation has what, come what forward. What were those signs? She's taken other children in school and done inappropriate things. Like what? Um, pulling pants down, kissing. She's mooned her teacher. Um, you know, she constantly has her hands down her pants. Things that are just inappropriate for someone her age. Did you confront your sister? I've spoken to her once, um, and I just explained to her that I can't move forward or past this until I know the truth. And I need her to either tell me the truth or we need to find an alternative route. Whose idea was it to come on the show? Um, I had said something about it, but I wasn't serious. My mom called, um, and we took the steps from there to follow through with it. Did your daughter spend a lot of time with your sister? She was babysitted by my sister or my mom um, over the summer because her, my fa her father and myself had crazy work schedules. Right. 
if she passes the lie detector test, I gotta assume that you'd be uh, very relieved. And if not, then I just want to be able to support my daughter and give her the help that she needs. And, and my if sister she, needs to get And if she fails, it fails. You, you say your sister needs to get help. Yeah. Um, would I be stating myself wrong if I would assume that you want your sister to obviously pass this lie yeah, detector? Okay. Of course. Okay. I want my family to go back to normal. I just can't. You want to know. Move forward until I. You don't want to entrust your daughter with anybody no, until you know the truth. No, of course we haven't left her with anyone. Let's bring out your sister, Brandy. I did not do this, and you know that I didn't. Brandy, you, know you cannot I tell me that a four-year-old child can say the same story over and over again without without like, changing it. I know you're She's just I know your mom, and I know you're just And I need to be there to support my daughter. I need to do what is right for her, and that is listening to everything that she says and going through it the right way. You, she has not changed her story. She's displaying inappropriate behavior in school, and you know that that had never I happened before this accusation I came up. I would do anything for her. Brady, as close as we've been getting, you should have come at me. It, no, how am I supposed to come to you? How am I supposed to come to you when my daughter is saying something like that? You because know you that I've had a hard time in my life. How is a child, how are you supposed to allow something like that in your child's life to change? I've been called a monster. I've been called a really bad person. Brady, I didn't do anything. My daughter, somebody touched her. She's accusing you of it. I didn't do it. She doesn't lie about things. These are the hardest shows to do. And these type of allegations between family members tears families apart. My daughter, somebody touched her. She's accusing you of it. I didn't do it. She doesn't lie about things. She has not changed her story. She, it, it, you need to believe a four-year-old child over anyone else. I need to believe my daughter. Like, that's, she's, she's telling the same story over and over and over again. It's just. Have you ever inappropriately touched your niece? No, I've never done anything like that. Why do you believe um, that the allegations against you are being brought up? I don't know. The, the only thing I can think of is me and her, she's a, she's a little girl. We, we have to go fights all the time. She'll come up to me and say the tickle monster will can't get me. Everybody, like, I'll chase her around the house and stuff like that. And the, her tickle spot's, like, right here on the inside of her thigh. The only thing that I can think of of why she's saying all this is because I accidentally touched her. Not but if it's an it. accident, then why has she said it? And it, she said it happened multiple times. You not just didn't, twice. hold on, hold on. You didn't touch her, you're saying, in a, in a way to get sexual gratification. Oh. You were playing with your niece, playing tickle monster. And you're saying, you know, you would dig in her leg and that you did touch her accidentally? I, I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of is... What I'm saying, did she always have her pants on when you were playing these yeah, tickle fights? I've never... I don't, I don't bathe her. I don't help her go to the bathroom. I don't change her. I don't do any of that. She's a big girl. She knows how to do it by herself. How did you find out you were being accused of this? Um, I had come home one day and there was a, a card from the detectives and family services... And it was the weekend, um, me and my mom <laughs> kept trying to call, and uh, Monday morning, when I woke up, I had called, <laughs> and they said that something, that I needed to come down because something happened to my niece, and I started freaking out, I didn't know what to think, <laughs> I started crying and everything else like that, because I hadn't talked to her in a month. I, Why haven't you talked to her in a month? I kept calling and calling and texting, and she wouldn't answer. Oh, so you, I, I couldn't. You knew the allegations. Talk so to anyone. You wanted to and let she, the I investigation play they out. They told me not to say anything. Right. Okay. I needed to be that, there no, for my daughter. No, that makes total sense. Um, so then the police tell you, "Come on down. Yeah. We need to talk to you." You're like, it could be a car accident, it could be anything. But then you get there and they say, what to you? They, they put me in a room with two detectives and they had asked me, um, have I ever touched my niece? 
in a sexual manner, and I said no, and I was like, I was shocked, I didn't know what to say, like, I didn't know how to handle it, and one detective said that I, he thought it was funny because I wasn't showing emotion, and I told him, I don't know how to handle this, like, I'm, I don't... Well, I'm sure you were scared. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I didn't know how to handle it. And you're 18 years old, so mm -hmm. I gotta imagine, uh, she's 18 years old, I got to imagine any 18-year-old being called down to the police station and put you in a room with two detectives that that's a very intimidating situation. What is your relationship like with your niece? Does your niece, you know, exhibit love for you? And this, when you saw your sister with your niece, she loving aunt? Yeah. I mean, they play, you know. It's it's not, it, it wasn't anything abnormal when we're all together, but... Oh, you know, I'm just a saying. says something and she says it's a secret. It's happened more than no, once. No, no, you know? no. I'm not talking about that. Yeah, no, and I understand no. that you're doing everything correct that you should do. But I'm saying, as you observe, like I observe my sisters with my kids, they're, they're great aunts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was your sister a very good aunt to your daughter? What you observe? For the most part, yeah. I mean. Okay. And you didn't speak to her because of the investigation. And, the and you understand she's here because. That's a big thing hanging over somebody with their child. Yeah, she can't let you be around the child until she knows absolutely that you you did a molest her. I want to prove to her that. And I you didn't came here today it. and you took a lie detector test to prove that you wouldn't harm yeah, your niece. I don't want to doubt in the back of her head. I want to be able to see my niece and my sister. Of course. <laughs> she doesn't lie about things. She's been saying the same thing over and over again. You know, my aunt Brandy took off my privates. I said, yeah, I said, one. She goes all the time. These are the hardest shows to do. And these type of allegations between family members tears families apart. She's been saying the same thing over and over again. You know, my Aunt Brandy tickles my privates. I said, yeah, I said, one. She goes all the time. The man that you had your child with, you're no longer together. But um, he's obviously concerned for his daughter's welfare. Let's bring out Anthony. You know, I hope this ain't true, and I hear crying. I don't feel bad for you. You know, my daughter, somebody touched her. She's accusing you of it, you know? And when I asked her about it, she started laughing and said that it wasn't bad, that it felt good. You think I want to hear that from a four-year-old? My four-year-old kid? Do it. And she's blaming you for I, it. The first time I there was an incident, she I was scratched on her you. arm. You and she said that it was you, and I swept it underneath the rug. She's I didn't a say kid. nothing. She's a but kid. She's you guys have a kid. She's a kid. She was two I years take old, her to the playground. I do everything with her. And that is serious. You know, they tell me that she blames you for it. I, you know, I hope that when the test comes out, that the it's, that, that it's I not do all true. Kinds of, you know I understand that. You know what? The only time when it can happen is the people closest to you that, does, that, that do the damage to your kids. I didn't do it. She doesn't lie about it's things. Hot. She's been saying the same thing over and over again. No one over touches again. her private. The first time that she came home, she had a, I left her with you. She was scratching her arm. And, and you I asked me what said, happened. She didn't want to tell me. I said that I she took her to the playground and I dropped out with her. That Brandy did it and it was a secret. She wasn't supposed to start that. There's when no the teacher, secret the between me and her. She, touched, she, she knows the in that house that there's the secret, no secret. And that's not supposed to know. She knows that there's no secret. At the same time, she told my daughter to keep secrets from my father. She knows that there's no right. secret in that house. I've never kept well, a secret. The truth. She knows that she can be open with me. We're going to find out. Um, how did how did you find out that she was being accused of this? I went to, a, to my daughter's school to pick her up one day, and they, they asked me to sit down. And when they, I sat down, they said, they have good news that um, they had to tell me something. They asked me who Brandy was. I said, it's Cassandra's sister. They said, well, on the teacher's lap. She was tickling her neck. And the teacher, um, she asked the teacher, why ain't you laughing? Ain't you ticklish? And the teacher said, no. So the uh, I'm ticklish. I'm ticklish all over the place, even my privates. So the teacher asked her, who tickles you in your privates? She said, my aunt Brandy. So the teacher put out her arm and asked her, how did she tickle you? And the way that uh, and my daughter showed her how she tickled her, she said it was inappropriate. They thought it was best to contact DCF and report it for sexual abuse. Before this happened, before this happened, what was your relationship like with we've her? Had, we've had, in the last year and a half, we've had a good relationship between me, her, her mom. Been right. going over the house the last year and a half. You know, and, and, I found and, out how, was, and how was... You guys got along? Yeah, we got along great. We always, we always joke, joke around. We had a good relationship, you okay. know. Did you ask your daughter about it? Yeah. And what yeah. did she say? She said the same thing. One day she was going to sleep and she said, Daddy, lay down. I want to talk to you. And um, she said, I said, what do you want to talk about? And she said, you know, my aunt Brandy tickles my privates. I said, yeah. I said, when? She goes, all the time. And I was like, you show all the time? And, uh, you know, it was like. More than seven she times. Said, she said it's happened more, you know, than just once, you know. Right. And uh, on one of the occasions that my daughter came home, 
she had a scratch on her arm, like somebody grabbed her, and you could see like nail marks on her. And I asked her what happened, and she said, I don't know. And usually my daughter has a scratch, she says, I got a boo boo, can you kiss the boo boo? You know, by this time when I, t I seen a boo boo, she pulled away from me, and she didn't want to talk to me. Uh, my daughter said that her aunt Brandy did it, and that she wasn't supposed to allow that, that was a secret. You know, so that happened. Then when this happened, the teacher talked to her. The teacher asked her, does daddy know? And she said, no, daddy's not supposed to know. It's a secret, you know? So the first time I spoke the wrong, but the second time. Did you cause injury to the little you know? girl's arm? No. <laughs> um, and you obviously have not led her around her aunt. No, not since this happened. We haven't been able we to talk about it. I haven't even brought her to my mother. Um, first of all, we all hope that nothing happened to your daughter. Yeah, of course. Of Same here. I, I hope that it's not true. That it's just something and you're, and you're also hoping that she... I'm hoping that it's just a misunderstanding, you know? These are the hardest shows to do. And these type of allegations between family members tears families apart. The results for Brandy's lab detector test is that she... And in this situation, as I was explaining, tickling with kids, um, you know, mention of private parts, that's something... But uh, a lot of times, as you said, digging in here, no, well, kids get confused. Answer, like, the, the auntie took and I'm not the taking side. anybody's side here. And she said, no, she pointed out of privates when I, when I talked to her about it. Right. You know, I asked her if it was inside the and she said, no. And she pointed out of privates and she showed me how she was tickled on her privates. You know, my daughter, a uh, four-year-old doesn't make that up. Two sisters that are, you know, spend your whole life together. You spend an every day together and very close. I certainly hope this comes out good for you so you can go back to being a great aunt and a, a great sister, okay? These are the hardest shows to do, especially children. You don't like to think any kid's being abused. And these type of allegations between family members tear families apart. Brandy, you came here today because you, from day one, have said that you haven't done this, and you want to be back with your sister, and you want to be back with your niece. And you came on to take a lie detector test. And we asked you, have you ever deliberately touched your four-year-old niece's private area for your own sexual gratification or excitement? You answered no. Have you ever sexually molested your four-year-old niece? You answered no. And the results for Brandy's lie detector test is that she told the truth. <laughs> I gotta take my daughter's word first. I know, you that's know? why I wasn't blaming I'm the only one that's there to protect her right now, you know? I was, you know? And I gotta, you know, I had, I had sorry I had to go through this, but, you know, this is my daughter. I understand. You know? Uh, we keep on going the way we were before, you know? We were at your house all the time. Every other day we were at your house, you know? To hear something like that and then not be able to talk about it for a month, that kills, you know? It hurt us every nothing, day. We were crying every you know? day. I was too, I couldn't and, eat. I and couldn't the, and the good thing is, there is an investigation into this, and and this is obviously a very good result. Um, but your daughter probably needs to talk to somebody and find out yeah, if there's did, like, any other things or people involved with this situation. Yeah. And maybe you got to keep. That's uh, the thing now, you know. Like I mean, now we got to find out if something did happen. Right, you know? and you know what? There's professionals that can help you and, and find out. <laughs> the good thing with this is, this is a big cloud removed from your lives. Uh, you obviously have very close relationship, and again. She's not blaming you. Nobody's blaming you. You did the right thing. You have to explore it if you think it. Mm -hmm. So you did the right thing, and I'm glad that you got, you got a good answer, because a lot of times people get a bad answer. You got a good one. You go back to being a happy family. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm glad you told the truth, and I'm glad this, this clears you. And, and, and best of luck to all of you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. I have an unbelievable update on a 23-year-old heroin addict named Jessica. I was just dead to the world. Like, the world was shut off to me. And I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. Like, I want to live. 
It has been 34 days since Jessica left for rehab, and she is back today. Today I have an unbelievable update on a 23-year-old heroin addict named Jessica. She called my show begging for help because she had been shooting heroin for seven years. She was raped, pimped out, and barely escaped death after an overdose. But Jessica came to my show to take control of her life and to get clean. So I sent her to rehab. Take a look. My mom passed away. She was she was very sick, and then she ended up dying when I was 15. And then I slowly got into heroin. My best friend, Jessica, she's been addicted to drugs since high school. When I turned 18, I got a large amount of money and an inheritance, and I was spending like 600 a day on dope. Easy 600 a day. It's so much money. And then that money was gone. And I had this crazy dope habit. I was getting money on the streets by selling myself. My father doesn't come in here because he's in a wheelchair now. If he wasn't in a wheelchair before he had the stroke, I wouldn't be living here. I would have been kicked out already. I know all along she'd been doing it, heroin. It breaks my heart to know that. I know that she wants to get well. I have faith that she'd do this this time. Like, I normally, like, I'll go to a program to appease my dad so he doesn't kick me out. Like, when he finds that needle and I can't, or the spoon that, oh, that's old. It wasn't there last week when I checked your room. You know what I mean? Like, I can't hide it anymore. I go to a detox or something. And then it got to the point where I left a program and he just changed his number. And I had no contact with him at all. And then randomly, like, eight months And how bad does it have to be where a dad shuts off his own daughter? And at the, and he's at the time, a it's, he's, he's the jerk. He's, it's his fault, but it's because he didn't... He would, now he can answer his phone in peace without thinking it's a call, I'm dead. And I right. understand that now, but I didn't then. Your arms are They're a mess. pretty scarred up. Uh, I mean, all over your arms, the yeah, front, like lumpy, the back. Like even in here, the doctors have told me that you could bleed, bleed to death. And I just, at that point, like coke in there too. Like I shoot coke in there too, I just don't. And it's only the reason why I'm using coke. I mean, it's hard to look at your arms. It's hard for me to look at them. This is from tying off. I ruined my skin. Like I... It's not how many people, I don't know. Like, everybody's dying. and I, don't, I had a seizure before um, because of I did too much coke. And, like, when I woke up from that, it wasn't like I seen a white light. And, like, I had a seizure and then turned blue. And when I woke up, it wasn't like I seen a white light. And it was, all, I was just dead to the world. Like, the world was shut off to me. And I'm not ready for the world to shut off yet. Like, I want to live. You're going to leave with Jeff. Okay. And you're going to go straight to rehab. And you're going to go get clean but I'm gonna hold you accountable. If you leave, and you're not far from me, <laughs> you're scary, I man. know where you live, I'm gonna come find you. I hope so. There's, there's the promise. If you leave that facility, and you don't get treatment, I'm gonna track you down, and I'm gonna come get you. So, the update's gonna be that you walk out after you completed the program, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, I'm changing my life. That's three-week program. Or in three weeks, we're going to do a, a show about me walking the streets looking for you. Okay. It has been 34 days since Jessica left for rehab. And I'm proud to say that I will not have to chase her down because Jessica has completed rehab and she is back today. Not very, uh, not very often a whole room of people cheer for you? <laughs> Never. Now, this type of show that we're doing with you, mm -hmm. um, even before the show started, there's a woman over here saying how these shows strike a chord in her and a lot of people saying how it's a great thing that we're able to change some people's lives around. How has the past month been in rehab? It was hard at first. First, I just want to thank you. Like, you really saved my life. I've been to a lot of programs where I live, and... The second I'm confronted with something, either withdrawal or feelings, I just leave. And, like, being at this program, I would wake up and picture the map 
and I was literally across it. <laughs> and so I was forced to deal with things, but like it was like I wanted to be forced. That's why I asked you for help. And I didn't even, I never, it never crossed my mind to not go, but I didn't think I was going to make it at the airport. Like I was gray. I was withdrawn so bad in the plane. The poor guy in front of me kept kicking his seat. It was miserable. And then I didn't get the medication for a while, but it was all worth it. Like it was, I needed to feel that misery. And once, once you got in there, how was it? It was awesome. That it was intense. What I got in that program in however many thirty four, I think you said, I couldn't get a hundred in a hundred days somewhere else at where I live. It was intense. Like I see a drug counselor twice a week and a therapist. And the groups, I was like, they answer your question with a question. They make you think. And I really worked on stuff. How does it feel to be sober now? Great. And it's a. I've been. I've gotten a little bit of clean time before, but the feeling I have is different now. It's not like cravings I want to get high like I'm disgusted my room looked like a murder scene like it was it was disgusting and it feels good to not wake up sick like I know how to make a bed now and clean up a kitchen what's the scariest part of getting sober the emotions you feel like when I was here last time it's not that I was even high I was just we call it getting off e like I wasn't I had stuff in me so I wasn't sick but that was normal to me and being normal I don't remember stuff and like now I'm really well whatever normal is but right. I'm really normal now I'm like I feel stuff and the scariest part is feeling emotions like I went to a grief group there and like I realized like kind of grieving my dad because he's not the same person and like knowing like kind of projecting and looking what am I gonna do if this happens just feeling the emotions because they're very intense even like a sneeze is so intense now like it's just a well, your emotions aren't dulled anymore. Yeah, and it's scary because my brain sometimes is like ping, ping, and it's like I gotta control that. What are some of the things that may cause you to go back to doing drugs? Like they call it triggers. Yeah. What are your triggers? Um. When I project and think about things happening to my dad, I'm 23, but I still feel like I'd be like an orphan. And like physical pain, whether it be a toothache, a headache, I break a foot or something like that, or just not being successful now that I'm, like I haven't even graduated. My, I, my biggest goal right now, it sounds kind of small, but to get my GED would be so well, amazing. That's not a small thing, that's a big thing. <laughs> uh, um, all right, well, Again, uh, you're a success. Thank you. You made it through. Not everybody that we, you know, listen, every time we do this, we hope that the people go through it. Um, and they don't. We do updates where, unfortunately, they don't make it. You made it through. Um, you're clean. You're successful for doing it. You can get your GED now. Um, what I want to do now is the place that we sent you, American Addiction Center. Um, Jeff Vachals here. And he's here to present you with your certificate. We just want to congratulate you, not just on the progress that you made, but for completing the 30 days over there at American Addiction Centers. Um, Jessica did great. Jessica did great. She picked up... hope that Jessica does moving forward what do I hope Jessica knows I'm actually gonna sit down um, Jessica knows me I usually don't give too much advice I usually listen and she calls me out on that um, <laughs> if I was to say what she did while she's in our program she did great you didn't have to come looking for her. Um, took on leadership qualities in the group other clients were able to grow because of what she says and what she shares in the group other staff counselors and therapists see it you have a drive. She not only called you, Steve, she called for help. She called everybody she could think of for help. It's just that you're the one that responded. So I want to thank you for that. But Well, we cer certainly couldn't do it without you guys. You guys are a big part of this, a um, big part of turning people's lives around, That's which th this is amazing. Um, we have a voicemail from your father and your sister. Why don't we listen to that? Jessica, it's your big sister, Leah. I just wanted to tell you that I love you, and I'm very, very proud of you. 
Um, you have your whole life ahead of you. You're a beautiful girl inside and out. And you got this in the bag. And I love you. See you soon. Hi, Jess. It's Jed. I just want to say I'm very, very proud of you. I love you. I love you. I'm proud of you. And I want you to do your best. You're going to stay clean. I love you. I'll help you. Love you. See you Tuesday. There you go. You made your dad proud. I know. There you go. Um, you watched the show, and you saw a person on my show, and she's the reason why you called. Um, let's take a look at when she was on the show. Desiree is 18 years old. When she was 13, she was shot up with heroin by her own mother. As a result, Desiree has lived in cars and garages and even became a prostitute for drugs and money. My mom injected me with heroin for the first time when I was 13. When I was with my mom and we were addicted to heroin, we would sleep in alleys. And... <laughs> we would sleep in alleys, cars, abandoned garages, abandoned houses, anywhere we can find to go. My mom encouraged me to prostitute. She introduced me to guys she has done it with before. She encouraged me to strip. I just wanted to get the drug and if it meant selling myself out to some man to get the drugs, I would do it. When I got out of juvie, I was bounced from foster home to foster home. And I was lucky enough to get placed with my adoptive mom, Ingrid. And she has been more of a mother to me in the past year and a half than my mom has ever been or ever will be. But when I turned 18, my sense of rebellion came out and I wanted to seek out my mom. The first night I was down there, she gave me meth, and I did that. And she had heroin waiting for me when I got down there. She took me up to this guy's house, and honestly, at first, she's like, all he wants you to do is just flash him and show your body parts, whatever. And he asked me if I was there for the same thing that she had been there for. And then we went to his house, and I sat on the couch, and he put porn on the TV, and then just kind of started trying to kiss me and take my clothes off, and then... It just kind of happened from there. And then was this a continuing thing that you did for yes, it was. for money? You want to talk to your mother? I got some things to say you to her. You have some things to say to her. Desiree, you lie about a lot of things. I didn't sell a lie detector test. I did not you know did. you prostituted either. You did, I didn't tell you to do heroin. Are you not once time? the lie detector did test? Did I tell you, you to do heroin? Straight from rehab, let's bring out Desiree. Um, 36 days ago, you left the stage and you went straight to rehab. How's it been? First off, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. And I'm really grateful for you. And I just really hope that I can help people struggling with addiction as well because this has been the best experience. Like, I wouldn't trade it for anything because going to the program has probably been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Well, Desiree's back, and she wants to meet you. Let's bring her out. Well, I can see a couple things happened since the last show. <laughs> um, um, now, Desiree, how long have you been clean now? Uh, about a year and two months. A year and two months. <laughs> this was really a shocking story that your mother was the one that was shooting you up with drugs and basically putting you out there for prostitution. Um, to have the courage to come on and go through rehab. And what I love about you is... Uh, just so giving at the end of it that you now want to help other people. Here this girl saw you on the show, uh, went down the same road you do, did as far as heroin addiction, and said, hey, I want to straighten up my life. 
And because of you doing that and, and making that plea, she's changed her life and, and got clean up also. She's changed her life. Um, what has kept you sober? Honestly, just at the beginning, yeah, it was extremely hard. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's always going to be hard. But now that I have, well, I have, obviously, the baby to keep me sober. I have my boyfriend. I'm not sure where he's at, but he's here somewhere. Well, there's a, why don't you stand yes. up? Say hi to everybody. So now you have something to look forward to. You're going to be a mom. You got somebody good in your life, and he's helping you stay sober? Yeah. What's your best advice for Jessica? The best advice I can give is don't go with the mindset that you're going to relapse because you're getting it in your head that it's going to happen, and it'll be inevitable. Like, you have to go and do this for you. And I see your dad and your sister are very supportive of you, and you know your dad wouldn't want to see you using again. He said how proud he was of you. Use that as your motivation. I have, I have my baby to do it for, and I have my boyfriend Ryan to do it for, and that just gives me all the motivation I need. And I know that I have to do it for myself every day too. And I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's easy because even after a year, it's still not easy. But just know that it gets easier, and it's it's so worth it. You think you feel great now? Just imagine how great it's going to be years down the road when you know you are not dependent on something that's smaller than you, that you will overcome something like that. When I watched you, I could feel your pain like it, like it hurt, and I know exactly what you're going through, and you just said what I was thinking. Like, at first, I was I got to do this for my dad, and then one day I was talking to Jeff, and it just came out that I have to do it for myself so I'm able to care for my dad. And I thank you because you're an inspiration. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> We're all proud of you. I really hope that there's somebody right now who's going to watch this show, look at you two and say, hey, they can do it. I'm going to try to do it. And we get them. And hopefully you'll be back and you can talk to that person. And we can just keep doing this and keep doing this. And you're the motivation for doing this show. You're the mo motivation why it's, it's worth doing this story and changing people's lives. I wish you all the best of luck. And if you ever feel like you need some help or you're slipping, you call us back, okay? After 16 years of friendship, Leon is accusing Dan of molesting his child. You see, Dan is now living with Linda, who was Leon's wife for 11 years. Today, we'll find out if the accusation of molestation is an act of revenge or a father's worst nightmare. If my son comes to me and says, Dan did this, then he did it. You know I never touched a kid. Best friends for 16 years. Why are you with his wife? You wanted to go with him because he had money. How dare you lie? You'll always be my son and my children. Then what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? You walked out on him, kid! Go home, Rick. No, I'm not! Is Dan molesting your children? No. Why is he saying that you did? Because I'm with his wife. He sleep kids. next to a child molester. I would never touch your kids, ever! How can you tell your kids that? You took a lie detector test, right? Yes, I did. We're friends for 16 damn years. That all went aside when you decided to bless my son. The results for your lie detector test is that you... I am on the show because my ex-best friend is accusing me for child molestation on his son. Leon used to be my best friend, 
and now he's jealous because I'm with his ex-wife, and that's the reason why he's accusing me for child molestation. Leon even said that I stuck my hands on the kid's pants and stuff while the mother walked in and said, what are you doing? And did nothing about it. These accusations are, are uh, ruling my life. I, I'm a school bus driver and I think they laid me off because Leon called them and told them about this. I have lost friends over this that I knew for 30 years. It all boils down to revenge and a grudge and jealousy over Linda living with me. I'm like really angry and sad too. I'm angry 24 7. I just want to get this over with. I know I'm innocent. Linda knows I'm innocent. And I wouldn't be here, be here if I wasn't. I would be in jail right now if these, if these charges were, or allegations were true. All right, Leon, that's the man you're accusing of molesting your children. He was Absolutely. your best friend for 16 years. Um, Ex friend, thank you. But he was your best friend for 16 years. Yes, he was. Um, steals your wife, yep. the mother of your five children. Mm -hmm. um, would you be making these accusations? Because let's face it, if you know he steals your wife, uh, you were married a long time, you got five children, are you just really angry at the guy and you're making these accusations? Absolutely not. If my son comes to me and says something's wrong, he did something. And he did it. So your son came to you and said what? Well, it first started with my sister. Um, my sister was giving him a shower. She went to wash his private parts up. And he says, no. And she says, why? And he says, he touched me. And my sister says, who touched you? And he says, Dan. And this is Linda's Dan? And, you know, says, yeah. This is Dan. Dan did this. Okay, so when did this all happen? Oh, we were at the hotel room. And, you know, he says that um, his mother and my were in the bathroom. And he said he pulled down his pants and he fondled them. And then my wife walked out, saw it, and he was pulling up his pants. Asked what was going on. They had an argument and left it at that. So your ex-wife, are you still married to her? Or? Going through the divorce. Going through the divorce. divorce. Is final soon. Um, but you're saying Thank your God. wife observed Dan do this? I believe so. Um, and didn't really do anything about it. Right. Um, you know, 16 years of being great friends with somebody, what happened? Money. Money changes everything. We what? were going through financial problems. Um, you know, no matter how hard I worked, it was never good enough for her. The, the drinking, the partying got to her. She was never a drinker. You know. Who, who's drinking and partying, hers or yours? Hers. Hers. So while you were working, she, she was, was out drinking and partying yeah. with Dan? With Dan. So uh, did Dan have money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At the beginning of 2009, uh, he came into some money from a back injury. Had like $42,000. And uh, you know, obviously she was there going, okay, I got my hand out. Let's go. So you... <laughs> um, you believe your wife left you because your buddy got forty-two grand? Absolutely. Um, and Money he changes everything. And he was buying her drinks and. Oh yeah, you know, pay for her cell phone bills, take her out to lunch. Well, take when that dinner. starts happening, your best friends with the guy. He yeah. Comes. Wouldn't you say, hey, what the hell are you buying? You know, paying for my wife's cell phone bill? Absolutely not. He's my best friend, right? No, no. If my buddy started paying my wife's bills, I'd be like, what the hell's going on here? Don't do that. He didn't think that this was abnormal behavior? No, because Dan actually was uh, prevalent to some, uh, my first, my wife's cheating the first time she did it. Oh, your wife cheated on you before. before. So knowing that he saw me go through that, you would not think that he would do it. He would say, like hey, that. he saw you suffer. Exactly. Do you really believe Dan did this? Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. Okay. If my son says he did something, he did it. And when your son said he did this, what action did you take? Well, my first reaction was give him a per permanent dirt nap, but I couldn't do that. You Jesus know, I restrained please. myself. I called the police, did what I had to you do. You called the police? Absolutely. Okay, and you called the police, and what happened? They investigated. They dropped the charges because my son couldn't tell the police what hotel room it happened in and when it happened exactly. 
You know uh, your wife and Dan say that you coached your son to say this. Absolutely not. That's not true. Absolutely not. You know I never touched a kid. Best friends for 16 years. Why are you with his wife? He your sleeps kids. next to a child molester. How dare you lie? You'll always be my son and my children. Then okay? what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? You walked oh, out on oh, his bitch! Go home, Rex. No, I'm not. You know I never touch a kid. Best friends for 16 years. Why are you with his wife? You wanted to go with him because he had money. How dare you lie? Your wife is staying with your best friend. It disgusts me. It disgusts me. Well, it would, disgusts me. I understand that. That's... Not only does she walk out of five of my kids, so you're but raising she your sleeps kids next to a child molester. So you have your kids. Yes. And she's with Dan. Yeah, absolutely. And probably about thirty-four thousand dollars now. Right. Okay. <laughs> More like zero now. Oh, it's, she, she made she, she made that. They spent. They absolutely. went through that already. She, huh? she helped him out there. Now he took a lie detector test before the show. Um, what if he passes? I'll probably apologize for the fact that, you know, he didn't do what he says he didn't do, but he's still a home wrecker. What do you hope, hope happens with the show? I hope all the lies and the rumors come to an end. Right. So you would be happy if Dan passes the lie detector test? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what you would hope for because right. you wouldn't want your son I just to want, actually... I have... want to know the truth. Okay. I, I really want to know what's, what's in his head. We're going to bring Dan out. You've got to keep your cool, all right? Do the best I can. All right. Try real hard. Yeah. All right. Let's bring out Dan. Just come on up. Just come on up. Slow down. Slow your roll, buddy. No, you know I never Slow touch your kid. Slow your roll. You know I never touch your kid. Yeah, okay. We're friends for 16 damn years. Yeah. So how can you come here and say lies? Because if my son said you stories. did something, you did Three different stories. One to the you cop, did it. one to attorney, and one here on the show. You did it, buddy. Which story is You right? did it. No. If my you son said you did it, it, it said it. No. Never. Yes, you did. I would never do yes, that. Yes, you did. The fact that Lindsay's with you no. doesn't, it doesn't mean matter. nothing to me. Who was with me? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter anything, You caught your kids lying. Never. And you know you did. Never. Leon, we've been friends for 16 years. Yeah. That all How went can aside. you say that? Yeah, I did. That all went aside when you decided to molest my son. No. Did you molest Leon's no, son? No, I did. You didn't. Um, why is he saying that you did? Because I'm with his wife. Okay. That's why. That's a great question. Why are you with his wife? Because he kicked her out. And our friends were both for 16 years. Okay. Okay. He kicked her out? Kicked her out. Of why did he kick her out? Because he thinks that she was cheating with me. Was she? No, she wasn't until a, a year after. She got kicked out of the house. Oh, come on. Never slept with her at all. Were you buying her drinks? Yeah, I was buying her drinks. Were you paying her cell phone bill? Nope, I was not paying no cell phone bill at all. Were you giving her money? Nope. No money. <laughs> you I can was not giving her money. Lie all you want, buddy. No, I was not giving no money. I was not giving no money. No money at all. Were you taking her out on the town, hanging out nope. with her? Nope, only place I took her was the Giants game. Oh, New York for three days when she no, never even called one day. It was only one day. Right. Okay. Listen, let's say what you're saying is true, okay? Let's say that he threw her out a year ago because he thought that she was cheating with you, but you weren't. But even a year later, you guys are best friends, right? Yes, we are. Best friends for 16 years. That means you never get to sleep with her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He says that at some point she cheated on him before, right? Yes, she and did. He, and that's got to be tough for anybody that, you know, you're with somebody. Yeah, that I was like, with him at the time. And it destroyed him, right? Yeah, it did destroy So him. you saw what it did to him. Yeah. And then you come so many years later and you do the same damn thing. After Logic. he kicked her out. It doesn't matter. Logic. That's his wife. This is your best friend. And she was my best friend, too. I met him both at the same time through another friend. It doesn't. Do you, you see nothing wrong with this. No, I do see something wrong with this. You don't feel bad at all that you're sleeping yes, with do. his wife? Yes, I do. You live in your well, own world, buddy. No, I don't. You live in your you own world with your, your lies. But his own world is his world. Yeah. Whatever. You're his friend. You support him. Maybe you don't agree with everything, but he's your friend. You don't turn around and sleep with your best friend's wife ever. I'm here because I never touched your kid. You know I never did this. Do you really believe that he's coaching his kid to say... Yes, I do. No. Are you, were you, he tells the story that you were in a hotel room, you're fondling the little boy, 
Um, his wife walks in the room, catches you, and doesn't do anything. Never true. Never true. I would never, ever do that. You know that for a yes, fact, man. We were friends for 16 years. Yes, you come did. On if now. my son says you did you something, keep you saying, did. You want that? Like, hey, come on. Believe me. You know, 16, 16 years, years, we're friends. But then you <laughs> his wife. These allegations are ruining my life. Say that again. His wife can't ruin my life like these allegations he's are making now. It ruins your friendship. I lost a job. It ruins your friendship. I know. It destroys his life. I love Leon to death. Destroys his life. I love Leon to death. Destroys his life. Yes. Linda stays with you, right? Yeah. Where's the kids at? With him. Okay. You don't feel bad at all that five little kids don't have their... I cry all the time. You cry all the time? Yeah. Yeah. I'll admit it. I'll cry all the time. It don't matter. Are you crying when you're making love to his wife? No, I'm not. Oh, there you go. Nope. Let's bring out your girlfriend and your wife, Linda. How dare you lie? How dare I'm not lying you? about... How dare you? I'm not lying about anything. be my son and my children. Then what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? You walked out on his bed! Go home, Rick! No, I'm not! You took a lie detector test, right? Yes, I did. And the results for your lie detector test is that you... ...is Dan molesting your children. No. You walked out on his bed! Go home, Rick! No, I'm not! You come out here, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? You, here's the guy. Who's the guy raising five kids who has to wake up in the middle of the night taking care of a kid that's having nightmares about him and you? It has nothing to do with me because you're the yeah. one that took my kids yeah. away from me. Right, you Nobody walked out, you, you had your bags for. packed and left. No, I did not. Yeah, you, you threw did. Me out and you wanted you to go did. with him because he had money. You know. Okay, look at him. I love tearing apart <laughs> stories, okay? You're saying he threw you out. Yes, he did. And what did you do? I had to call my friend up and call him up and have him come get me. And then because you, he threw my stuff right. out on the porch. He threw your stuff on the porch, the so house. you had to call Because Dan. I had nobody in my life to right. help me. And, and, and you had to sleep with him. <laughs> Um, so I, I want to get this picture straight because I saw this all the time as a policeman, right? He threw you out, and you got five little kids in the house, and he said, oh, he threw me out. I got to go. Come pick me up, Dan. Yeah. He, That's how it he told me to leave my kids with him. He yeah. told and me you to said, me and yeah, me And out. you said, okay. No, I didn't say okay. But you left. Well, what am I supposed to do? Call the police and say, lock him up. I was there with you. Hold on, hold on. Am I being unfair right now? Am I picking on you? Who believes her story? <laughs> Leanne came home, threw her stuff out. They got five kids. They've been married 20 years. And she said, okay, I got to go because he told me to. <laughs> Who possibly believes that? I don't even have to give you a lie detector test. <laughs> Now that we clarified that, is Dan molesting your children? No. Did, did you walk in on him, seeing no, him? No, he never final, did. No. Your, your no. Why do you think that Leon is saying this? Because that's all he's good for, lying no, about No, why do you concerned. think, but why do you think he's saying this? I don't know. You have no because idea? Because I didn't find out. Maybe because you're on. sleeping with his best friend? Yeah. No, no way. That's, that's not a reason why? You don't think that's a reason why? What other possible reason then, other than it's true, other than it's really happening, what other reason could it be? He was friends, best friends with this guy for 16 years? Yes, he has. Okay. And you're not. And he knows he wouldn't even touch him. He knows it. But he'll touch you. (laughs) 
You don't feel bad on any level at all? Yes, I do. Oh, you do. Do you cry all the time, too? Every day, 24 hours a day. So every... Because <laughs> of my children. They both said the same thing. Crying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How can you two possibly be happy if you're crying all the time? I'm cry I cry a lot because over my kids. He took my kids away Go back. Go back home to your kids. I call him and I go to You know, isn't it sad? $42,000, right? Now, I know to a lot of people that's probably a lot of money, right? $42,000. Cash settlement, no taxes, whole thing. Forty-two grand. And I, I wonder, like, what would be the number on my two children? What's the number that I walk out on them? Uh, 42000 420000 4.2 million. No. Didn't take much? There's no number on this planet that's going to make me walk away from my children. <laughs> how long have you been away from Leon? Almost a year and a half. And well, how long have you been with Dan? Uh, at the same time. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Oh, the truth comes out. You took a lie detector test, right? Yes, I did. And if he passes, which would be, I think, we all want. Yes. We don't want any child to be molested. So we want that. Love for it to come back. He passed it. And he said if he passes it, he, he would apologize to him for that. And, and that's about as far as I would go. That's exactly um, about as far as it would go. But what if it comes back and Dan does fail? I'm just curious. Of what. If he fails, then yeah. I have to leave. That's how I feel. Because these are my kids. And then where would you go? I find somewhere to go. Do you have any other best friends? No. You got a girlfriend. Absolutely. And she's here. Let's bring her up. Your lie detector test is that you. Marijuana can cause paranoia. How much pot do you smoke? Huh? He thinks his girl is sleeping around. I know you cheated on me with my neighbors. Are guys climbing through the window? No. I've I never seen a dude act like that before. Could it be what he's smoking and not what he's seeing? You have destroyed my life. Plus. Naked chicks. On her guy's cell phone, next Steve. Did you have any knowledge that Dan had sexually abused your son? Let's find out. When you're laying in bed at night, do you think about your children? All the time, 24-7, yes. And do you think like, man, no matter how good this is or how good dad is, I want to be with my children above everything, and you know. Yes, and I have said that. And but have you done anything? I can't because he won't let me. That's yeah. all. He won't let well, me well, in yeah. this order for right. me to see my He's children. He's not going to let you because you're his best friend. Yeah. He, right I mean, what message are we sending your children? What message are you sending your children? Not me. You, when. They know this is dad's best friend and now mom's sleeping with him. What message are you sending your children? You know, there are certain things that hold us back, restrain us from doing things that screw our kids up, that sends really terrible messages. But you, you seem like, you know, 42 grand, I'm in. No. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the tears, by the way. Um, there ain't gonna be none. <laughs> Now, Patty, you've been with him for four, four months. Four months. 
Um, and what's going on? Uh, the kids don't like their mother. They've told me many a times she has walked out on him. She's lying. I love those kids like my own. They, they After tell four me. four months? They tell me they love me. They call me mommy. These are kids that their mother walked they're out They're not even on. your hold kids. On, hold on. You need and to shut up. Hold on. Hold on. No, hold on. you make me. Okay, hold you on. You need to shut up. You make me. Okay. The little boy wakes up at night and uh, he comes in the room. How old is the little boy? He's seven. Okay. Yeah, comes with fake tears. He comes in in the, in the bedroom at night. He's crying. He's screaming. There's mo mommy, there's monsters in the living room. That kid was looking at you. That's why. You okay. need to oh. shut up. No. He said the two monsters oh, were no. you two. No, no. no. He's he's going, so oh, oh, yeah. Call me whenever I'm there. I want to him. Okay? I take care of my kids. Coach no, kid. please be quiet. Coach the kids some more. Okay, no. stop. Stop. He says. Hold on. Hold on a second. The only thing I yeah. have to say about this is, and I believe I you, but yeah. don't you find it odd? Isn't it a little over the top that the kids are already dressing you as mom after four months? Because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for okay. a mother figure. Listen, hold on, hold on. But, Leon, somebody has to be the voice of reason up here. Absolutely. And, you know, I understand that you're hurt. Your kids have probably got to be traumatized, Absolutely. you know, unbelievably. But somebody's got to say, well, she's not your mom. We, I'm dating her for four months. They, this is not your... Hold on. This is not your mother. Uh, me and your mother have some problems here. Absolutely. We're trying to work them out. Yep. I mean, somebody's got to be like, let's stop the craziness here. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely right. And, and, Patty, it's wonderful to come in somebody's life and, and if children are, are, have a void because their mother's not there and you're trying to fill that void with some, you know... You know, uh, I, I'm there to protect them and love them and care for them. But again, four months, it's... I understand that, but it makes me feel good that, that they feel safe with me. Right. You know? Um, but then you send uh, text messages uh, to Dan and Linda. Uh, he don't love Linda. They're my kids now. Uh... I don't break promises like the deadbeat mom, didn't she? I don't. don't. I don't break promises. These are my to those kids. kids. They're my kids. Okay, leave me alone. They're my kids. I have witnesses. The kids love me and call me mommy. <laughs> they do. I'm not gonna lie. I, but what's the point of this? Because I'm fighting back for what the things that they've said. You've to me. just entered the picture for four months. I understand that. Just kind of stay out of it. Because I miss him dearly. Okay. And I don't care what okay. that bitch wait, says. Wait, wait, wait. I think you're, well, hold on. Maybe you're going about it the wrong way. Ah, that bitch. Da, ba, ba. How about, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for you, okay? I'm going to pretend I'm you. You know, Leanne, I'm really sorry. We were married for 20 years. We have five beautiful kids. And I really messed up. And I'm really sorry that I'm sleeping with your best friend. I really, that's, it was the biggest mistake of my life. Even though I liked Dan, I should have restrained myself and not slept with your best friend. But now being here on the show today, I realized my kids mean more to me than anything. And I'm really sorry that I hurt your feelings. But can we move forward for the sake of our children and, and let me be a mom and spend time? And I wish you and Patty all the best of luck, but I want to see the kids. How'd that sound? That sound pretty good? Yeah. Sound like something you'd say? <laughs> yes, I would. Um, and that would all be contingent on Dan passing the lie detector test, right? Yeah, and you too. Let's find out. be my son and my children. Then what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? I will never touch your kid, ever. How can you tell your kids that? And the results for your lie detector test is that you... Dan, you took a lie detector test. I hope this is a case of somebody really pissed off that their best friend stole their wife. Linda, you came on the show. 
And you were able to stop crying long enough to take a lie detector test? <laughs> and you were asked, did you have any knowledge that Dan had sexually abused your son? You answered no. You were asked, did you witness Dan sexually abusing your son? You answered no. And the results for her lie detector test is that Linda told the truth to both Thank questions. Thank you. Hey, right, don't go over and over. Stay happy. Okay. I'm going to tell you the best year, man. Okay. Step it out. Okay. Now, now, I'm going to do the better response. See, I'm not telling you, you know, I'm telling you the truth. I really want to be in my kids' lives. See, that would have been a little better. <laughs> but this is the one we really am concerned about. Like I said, I hope you pass. Because yep. I don't want any kid being molested, yep. being tortured. I don't want that. So for all sake, I hope this is a case of somebody really pissed off that their best friend stole their wife. Yep. Dan, you took a lie detector test and you were asked, have you ever sexually molested Linda and Leon's son? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that you told the truth. <laughs> told you? I told you we're best friends, man. We are best friends, man. I love you. I would never do nothing to you, man. Because you're a wreck. No, I'm not. You're a man. I've never touched your kid. Now you know the truth, okay? Now you know. Now you know. And I did the right thing. I defeated myself. But then you played with it. He's my kid. What? You're a liar. Please. You're a liar. Have that. You're jealous. Have that. You are freaking jealous. Have that. You are jealous. Have that. What is that? Nothing with money. What is that? You're jealous. What is that? You are so freaking jealous. Cut me out. 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 Good coaching.
sloth from the Goonies on your show. Don't worry about it. Um, and Patty, we're going to have a little family moment here, so thanks for coming on the show. No problem. But I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. Okay. be my son and my children. Then okay? what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? Will always be my son and my children. Then okay? what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? What I have to say is how do you leave five kids? Because your father did it to me and he ruined our lives with young. How did he do it? How? You how? ask him that. Because he's going to lie to you. I have tried every day, 24 hours a day, to see you guys. Yeah. I love you guys to death, and I'll do anything, and he knows it. He just doesn't want me to be there for you guys, because he's got this new girl and thinks she's the mother of you guys, and she's not. I will always be your mother, matter what. I, I want do nothing everything. to do with you, because you no, have done that's nothing. That's not true. You have that's done not nothing. That's not true, because but he walk won't out. let me. No, I didn't walk out. I walk through me, because I'm talking right now. You're my son. Do you son. understand me? No, you're my Get son. Out of my Face. No, you're my son, and I love you. I'm not your son. Yes, you are. Really? You'll always be my son and my children. Then okay? what are those kids doing at home right now without a mother? Because he threw me out. He didn't That's throw why. you out. Yes, he you did. walked out. No, I you didn't. left with dad That's and left him too. by himself no, with no, no kids. That's not true. If you keep saying something over and over, eventually you believe it, and I think you're doing a good job of that. Um, and I'm just going to give you a piece of advice. She is your mother. I know you're hurt. You have every right to be hurt. I'm not hurt. It's the little kids that are hurt right now. But you're hurt, too. You're, listen, and there's nothing wrong with that. If my mom did the same thing that your mom, I'd be hurt, too. There's nothing. And even if I was 50 years old, I'd be hurt. This is your mom, and she always will be your mom. And hopefully, hopefully someday she's going to wake up and realize, man, what I did to you and those four other little kids, I can never live that down, but I'm going to do my best and try to be a good mom. It's not happening right now, obviously. But someday, maybe it will. But the fact is, you had a choice, and you choose to leave. And you choose to stay away. And you choose Dan. And that's, that's too bad. That's too bad for your kids. You're being selfish. You're putting your own needs and wants ahead of your own children, ahead of your own family. And you will regret it for the rest of your life. You can never really make up for what you did. You're playing house with Dan. So... I wish you the best of luck. I wish that you wake up out of the fog that you're in, the fog of Dan, and go back to your children. Nobody's saying. But I can't go back to him. Who's asking you to? <laughs> Adult relationships fall apart all the time. But your relationship with your children shouldn't fall out. <laughs> Now, you're not doing everything you can to see your kids. You know it and I know it. I've tried every day. You're not I trying nothing. You're I'm too not busy with to this group ball. But when I call them, I, I call my kids. I that you would call. Don't call get off the damn phone and walk your ass over there. But he won't let so me over the house. He won't let me over the house. He don't let me near on, my kids hold on, hold on. at all. You know what? Make all excuses you can. If that makes you feel I better, make excuses of why you don't see your children. Nobody, nothing can stop me from seeing mine. And I get the hell that. off my stage. <laughs> um, it's a terrible hurt that you experienced, um, but you're gonna get over it. You're a big boy, and you got a new girlfriend that's, you know, seems like she's pretty crazy about you, loves your kids, so good for you. Um, like I said before, she is your mother. She will always be your mother. A lot of people have problems with their parents. They go through periods where they don't talk, they're not together, but someday they make amends. Hopefully, and I wish you all the luck in the world that happens with your mother, that some, someday you get into a good place. Um, for the sake of your kids, if she makes an effort, I hope Absolutely. you'll work with her to see the kids. Absolutely. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Everyone's got something to say about the Steve Wilco Show. Whether you love it, hate it, or have a funny comment, drop a line at stevesmailbag at stevewilkos.com. If I read your email on air, 
I'll send you a free t-shirt. Let's get to my first email. Hey Steve, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. I wonder, do you ever get burnt out? Do you still see good in people? Lisa. Hi Lisa, I love helping people and no, I never get tired of it. I love having my show, but I also know that it's important to leave it here in the studio so I can be a good father and a husband when I go home. I believe in a basic good in people and their ability to know what's right and wrong. My job is to help remind people of this and I plan on doing it for a long, long time. Here's my next email. Steve, my fiance watches your show every day and loves it. I had problems watching it at first because I felt you were a bully. That's until I actually saw what a big heart you have for the victims on your show. You give everyone the chance to speak their minds until the truth comes out in the end. Thanks for being there for those in need. We watch your show together now, Terry and Sherry. Thank you for giving the show a chance. I don't bring guests on just to yell or throw them off my stage, but sometimes there are victims who have asked for my help with standing up to someone. I do my best to help everyone who calls the show, even if that means yelling in order to get through to those guests who don't want to listen or accept responsibility. Lisa wrote my next email. Dear Steve, for starters, I would like to say that you're an American idol to most people that watch your show. I know you're an ex-police officer and don't believe in taking the law into your own hands. I agree with you on that. But if you were in a situation where some guy was abusing your children, how would you react? One of your biggest fans, Lisa from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hi Lisa, it's a scary thought to imagine anything bad happening to your children. And if there is someone who is single-handedly causing them pain, it's hard not to take the law into your own hands. Some of my guests have been in this situation, and I always remind them to handle it the right way. Go to the proper authorities and open investigation. Protect your children. Trying to solve the problem by yourself in a physical manner could make matters worse. You're no good to your children if you get taken away from them as a result. My final message is from David. I don't mean any disrespect to you. I just don't believe for a second your show is factual. Who in their right mind would want to talk about such serious problems on a talk show instead of calling the police? It boggles my mind. I only expect to get a hard-headed response from you. You strike me as that kind of guy that's never wrong. Regards, David. Hi, David. Sorry to disappoint you, but 100% of our stories and guests are real. They're here because they acknowledge that they need help. If we offer the chance to get to the bottom of a situation and provide the help our guests need, why wouldn't anyone with a problem come on this talk show?